What is up, entrepreneurs? Welcome back to I almost said the Friday live, but it is not Friday, but we are live nonetheless. We are here to discuss the brand new Sony A6700 dropped this fine and beautiful morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day in the neighborhood. It is a great day to be a creator. If you have the Sony A6600, if you have the Sony A6400, you can still hold on to the Sony A6100. God bless its soul. RIP to the A6100, long since passed away. You got the ZV-E10 and you're ready to up level, okay, a little bit. Get rid of some of that rolling shutter. Get rid of some of that 8-bit jump over into the 10-bit game. The A6700 might be the camera for you. Um, for some odd reason, I, I know Sony has my address. I'm just not quite sure why we ain't getting that embargo goodness happening. I mean, send a letter, send a pigeon, send a somebody, let your girl know what's up. We're not entitled over here, but we are asking, you know what I mean? If you've been around for the stream, you already know the paid sponsor is Chapstick because we're not going to be out here with crusty, dusty lips. It's too early in the day for that it's, it's always too early in the day for that <laughs> and so the new sony a6700 dropped um i'm very excited to see the s log 3 s gamut 3 cine 10 bit 422 an updated sensor no more jello red rolling shutter like we've been seeing all on all the other stuff you're gonna have access to better stabilization in the camera and digital stabilization, better improved digital stabilization in the camera. It's all kinds of stuff packed into this beast. All the footage you're looking at right now was shot with the allegedly Sony a6700. <laughs> so they say, so they say, but uh, let's get into the peeps. If you guys have questions, even if it's outside of the a6700, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things over here super chats is available until you. you don't have to fyi though you do not have to send a super chat or send a buy me a coffee in order to get your questions answered it doesn't work like that over here those are just gifts of love should you choose to drop them i love to receive them if you love to give them but it is not required okay for you to get your questions answered everybody gets their questions answered on the stream on the channel always okay so fyi we got Marine X in the building. Good to see you, brother. Glad that you are here saying, what up? Took your advice, sold my A6600 to MPB, got 790 for it. Can you believe the uh, A6600 new on Amazon dropped to 998 the exact moment the A6700 was announced? Yes, because I was also watching that uh, in the background um, with that. And so here's the thing, being in the business for a long time, being a creator for a long time and watching how different brands move industry shifts or whatever the only way that the a6600 would have stayed at 12.99 is if this camera was in that 18 to 2200 dollar price range and even then it may have only dropped by one or 200 bucks um, but considering this is that successor usually what used to happen with sony you'd had the a6000 a6300 a6500 you had the trio of like beginning beginner intermediate advanced ish in APSC, that's not happening anymore uh and <laughs> i can see some comments on the channel from folks like oh, i want this camera with this i need a better a64 it was called the a6600 in 2019. then we had the a61 64 and 6600 that's the end of that era it's just going to be 67 i'm pretty sure they're going to skip the a6900 i don't think they out there rolling like that in them digital streets it'll probably be an a7000 whenever we move on next but i do like the fact that this new camera has a bunch of stuff on it but here's the deal pro tip if you all are in the market you're trying to sell your stuff you're looking to sell your things you have to know how people move it's like when other people zig you zag kind of a thing this is one of those moves while saying like if you ask me a question in the comment section across any of my videos i reply so you all can be helped for stuff like this when the new camera is rumored to drop, that serial number gets registered. You're getting uh, not just like, and like, let me just say this, side note, derailment and let me stand on my soapbox. The <laughs> Sony Alpha rumors dude is tripping, okay? 
I, I don't know what to tell you. Just pay attention to the community tab, and I'll try to filter some some of that muck on the the rumors site. But he's been tripping for a minute lately. But once you start to get closer to more confirmed logical updates that are coming from trusted sources or whatever, it makes sense. Right before that, if you're going to get rid of your camera, do it then so you get the highest value on the return. From what I've seen, like I said, pro tip, from what I've seen, if you're going to trade in your camera, MPB, KEH are usually going to get you the highest. Pro tip, on top of the pro tip, if you do a purchase with MPB, that's who I sold my APS-C uh, camera stuff to, if you are going to do a trade-in, this is how you speed up the process for the trade-in so you have the money for the upgrade before you wait. Because otherwise, you're going to be waiting a week, and then you got to wait for your stuff to get delivered unless you pay for updated shipping. Nobody wants to wait a week or two weeks. Amazon spoiled the rest of us like crazy. So here's how you do this. Buy something. In your trade-in, don't just do the selling only. Do the trade-in. You get one by one. You get higher value for it putting y'all on game right now you get higher value for your trade-in when you trade it in instead of selling it number two so like buy something in exchange it doesn't matter the amount it does two things it speeds up the time frame for your trade-ins so that like everybody else may wait three four and five business days you're going to get like two to three business days so as soon as your stuff get there like in a day or two if not sooner, like, so yeah, somewhere like mine was like a day or two. And it's not because they knew who I was or my brand name. I didn't pull none of those. Like I'm this per, I didn't do none of that. So buy something. So you have a trade in, get the higher value. If you search on YouTube for certain creators, I don't have any affiliation with them. I just do business with them. Use their link, get a kickback. If it's 15, 20% or whatever for K E H pro tip on top of the pro tip on top of the pro tip. If you sell to KEH and you find the value is higher there, go to Tony and Chelsea Northrup's website. I know not everybody cares for them. I don't care about your feelings. We're up trying to get you the bag, okay? The most in exchange for the value right now. If you're trading in or selling, go to Tony and Chelsea Northrup. They have a extended relationship with KEH. It's usually baked into the video or something, so you may have to watch through or search around, whatever. Get the code. You get an extra 15% on top of that. So right before something comes out, right now is a good time to sell. Why? Because a bunch of people are going to be selling stuff, but you may not get as high as you would even like a week or two weeks ago, two weeks ago. So kudos to you, Marine X, on getting the bank on, on that one. Because I told y'all, like, again, I communicate with y'all through Instagram stories and the community tab to put y'all up on game. But if you have a question, ask me. I'm even on threads now, the Instagram app. Ask me. Uh, I do the same stuff that I tell y'all about. Okay. I put my money where my mouth is. <laughs> so what is uh, going on? Alan Jones. Good to see you, brother. Glad that you are here. Jay's tech view saying, well, my ZVE 10 will now become my B cam to the ISC 700 was going towards full frame, but I think I'm going to stick with APS-C. Now that is the topic of the day, or at least at the moment for the difference in price. And if you look at what this is going to run you on the Sony a 6700, the names with the cameras, good Lord, $1,400. Y'all want another pro tip on top of the pro tip, put a pro tip in the chat. I, I can give y'all one more. I'm gonna give you all the goods today because now is the, is the, is a good time to make some good entrepreneurial creative decisions financially. If you want another pro tip on top of the pro tip on how you can get like about 300 bucks off on this brand new camera. Let me know, put pro tip in the chat. Otherwise I'm holding on to that one. <laughs> but what happens with this camera and is just now coming out for $1,400, $1,300, 1400 bucks. This camera is the bee's knees because like I said, the rolling shutter is a little bit went from a 24 megapixel sensor to 26 megapixel sensor. So now the ZVE 10, the rolling shutter that you have is a couple, let's talk about the benefits real quick. Between the ZVE-10, if you were going to upgrade from that to the A6700. Number one, do like I just gave y'all on the previous pro tip. But if you want that other juicy one, you're going to have to throw a pro tip in the chat. Okay? But trading in, here's what the value exchange is going to be between the ZVE-10 
and a camera like this a6700 you're looking at less rolling shutter so when you move just even slightly move if you vlog and want to vlog in 4k um let me put this out there the people that are saying like i don't know people that do vlogging or live streaming or podcast in 4k i don't know if those people actually make any of those forms of content on a regular and consistent basis and use them as a form of profit making money from your content because otherwise you would vlog in 4k you would live stream in 4k now vlogging is it depends what the value is value exchange of that piece of content is but if you're vlogging in 4k i'm doing that now because i don't have the rolling shutter issues i would have to be a static shot with the zv10 in order for me to do that but otherwise it's like it would be 1080p to minimize the rolling shutter in addition to uh, it's just not being great stabilization on the camera. So you have both of those fighting at you. Now you don't on the A6700. How much time are you going to save in Catalyst Browse now? Here, that's, the, that's the biggest thing nobody's talking about. How much time are you about to save in Catalyst Browse now? You're going to save a whole heck of a lot of time. It's be, it would be me and my video editor, and I would throw footage into Catalyst Browse before sending it so he wouldn't have to. And, you know, I'm like, Jet, these have Catalyst Browse, these don't, blah, 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 blah. Saves us a ton of time now with the ZV-E1, which is what you're looking at right now on my Sony uh, ZV-E1 and my trusted, I just love this lens. I, it's gonna be hard to replace this one, the Sony 35 millimeter F 1.8. And this is what the, the camera looks like right now. It is cropped in about to a 1.2 times crop uh, using the clear image zoom, but still have eye autofocus and hashtag all the things. So. Let's get back to the ZV-E10 to A6700 comparison. So like I said, the better sensor performance, you're also getting um, ISO performance. So even if you want to use an F4 lens where F4 lenses tend to be cheaper than the F2.8 lenses, especially zooms and stuff, you can get away with the F4 lighting wise. You take the ZV-E10 in the dark, watch some of the vlogs and stuff from when Doc and I are out and about hanging out when he accuses me of stealing jalapeno Cheetos, which we don't have no footage of that. Okay, we, we, cannot, we can neither confirm nor, or, nor deny those allegations about eating his, his flame. <laughs> his, no, it wasn't flame, it was jalapeno Cheetos. <laughs> we can neither confirm or deny those allegations, all right? But you would see sprinkles in the shot. Indoors, regular lighting, you're fine. Take that out and about, it's starting to go dark. You like, dag, I wish I had an F2.8 to bring that in. You'll have to worry about that with the A6700. You also get still, so here's the other benefit. I have. I don't think I've talked about this in a video yet. The headphone port on this joint, um, not the headphone. It's the headphone and the microphone port. I tested this, um, uh, it's like before I left and went out of town. Because what I noticed is the microphone port has always been great across mirrorless cameras, especially considering DSLR, that's old school talk, but the headphone port is better. So if you look at this design for the way that this looks, then you look at the ZV-E1, it is slightly different. It's not exactly the same on the E1 as it is in the, uh, from the A7C, which is another great camera that's been discounted recently. Uh, because allegedly that camera's on the way. So it's not quite the same as far as the USB port. It could just be the rotation to make space for the EVF. But again, it's again, it's not quite exactly the same. All right. But the headphone port and a just slightly better microphone um, performance. So if you're out and about, here's where this makes sense. When you are out and about and you're listening to the audio and y'all seen I've been struggling between DJI and Rode and both of them about to punch a square in the throat because they both getting on my nerves. And I'm like, dag, I just made a video. I'm like, no, I think me and the roads are, and then it's like the DJI's picked up where the roads start having interference. Anyway, I'm beside myself about it. You put your headphones in to listen to see if you're having interference issues. The headphone port is better on these newer cameras. I'm experiencing this on the A, on the ZV-E1 because I, I'm listening just between the ZV-E10 and the E1. I'm like, there's no way for me to really share this with you i'm gonna try to find a way i think i i've thought of a way to do this it's it's quieter so i have the fan on computers running you got all the stuff whatever and you hear that shh, real loud noise in the in the e10 it's quieter in the e1 i would venture to say i would put some money on it if i were a betting person 
that the headphone port is better also in this camera as well, especially if it's kind of sharing the same technology or whatever. This is gonna be a UHS-2 SD card slot. So um, like I've been saying <laughs> on the community tab, upgrade that SD card, because if you're using the same old, same old, V30 cards is not gonna get you all of these specs and stuff. And let me tell y'all, data ain't cheap. So, <laughs> and if you saw my stories from, what was it last night? My, one of my SanDisk cards just passed away. All right, passed away this evening. <laughs> And so, but I'm progressively upgraded now to cycle those cards out from last year. I'm like, dang, I need to get all V60 and V90. Those cards is expensive as hell. All right, so put your, put your ducats together because you're going to need them. Um, so let's get to the comments real quick because we can go through specs, but it ain't all about the specs. The difference is the performance. I can tell you from using the ZVE-1 and seeing that you're getting improved IBIS, no, you don't get, so this is the E1 comparison, you do not get dynamic active stabilization. The Bees Knees Hall of Fame look like it's on the gimbal electronic stabilization that's in the E1. The camera you're looking at right now, it is not in the A6700. I noted that across the specs and looking through the press release, because Sony was still sending me the press release. They just didn't give me the camera yet. So I guess I got to earn, earn my keep a little bit more with that. But I'm like, oh, that would, I'm, I'm stuck like Chuck on that one now. Let me tell y'all something. I do not, like I talk with my hands, as you can see, okay? When you are vlogging, got my little Manfrotto Pixie been holding it down since 2019. Actually, I got the, uh, what's the name right here? Right on E10. When you are vlogging, you, if you're going someplace, if you're doing something, like you're at an event, whatever the thing is, you're bouncing. You don't have time to be methodical about how much you're shaking. What I've noticed with me, because I talk with my hands, I'm still talking with my hand with this camera, added extra shake. Sony just discontinued, I don't know if y'all know this, the 10 to 18, 10, in English, the 10 to 18, 10 to 18 millimeter F4 OSS lens is discontinued with Sony. So just a little FYI, you can grab that lens for super duper cheap right now. Um, the 10 to 20 F4 PZ does not have stabilization in it. I still think you're going to need as much stab as possible because you don't have dynamic active in the A6700. So 488 compared to I paid 800 something or whatever. I think even close, maybe seven. I got a little, little discount on that. Uh, you might want to. I did see them pro tips in there, so I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Loon, 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 Leon, Leon. Let me know how to pronounce your name properly. Pro tip right quick. All right, here's the pro tip since we back on the pages. When you see a new camera like this that just came out, this is your pro tip of the day. The pro tip on top of the pro tip on top of the pro tip. All right, you, if you need to save a few extra ducats, you need them a few extra hundred dollars to go towards a lens. I already gave you the pro tip on how to get that extra bang for the buck with MPB and KEH, which to my experience in trading in my actual gear, give you the, the greatest return. Yes, you could sell it yourself, but you're gonna probably get that, get some of that eaten those in those seller fees, whether it be eBay or whatever, or deal with shysty people on Facebook Marketplace, X, Y, and Z. Um, but here's the deal. Work with a reputable company, get your stuff in order. 5 a.m. I'm gonna give y'all two, cause I like you. I like you. <laughs> no, 5 a.m. 5 a.m., 6 a.m., your time. It's usually about Central Standard Time. From KEH, MPB, and BNH, especially BNH photo video. R go on the website, especially if you're already awake, and just search the used real quick. Because what will happen in 30 days from now, there are people that have this camera that pre-ordered it today. Those people got that camera. So number one, they can get in on this overheating, like, oh, the camera don't work. This camera, this e E1 I'm running right now, been going since 10 a.m. No overheating symbol. You can check my Instagram stories, all right? So it's a lot of people jumping on the overheating bandwagon. Are we at that point where cameras probably need external fans from the manufacturer or an internal fan? Yes, because the body sizes and the frame rates and all this stuff is not working right now. Even Fuji is doing this. Canon had the same problem. It's like, it's a thing at this point now. So we're there. However, 
30 days from now, those people are going to be like, here's why I returned my Sony a 6300 because it's not, it's not working for me. I just don't know if it's for me. I just don't know if I want to keep the camera. And I, I can't use as a professional photographer, as a professional videographer, I just don't know if it'll work. You're going to have those people <laughs> that buy a camera and they're going to return it after 30 days. The way you get this camera for a few hundred bucks off, get somebody that just missed it in there on day 31. You know the camera has not been messed up. It's still brand new in the box with all the accessories. Nine out of 10 times, nearly all of my cameras were bought like this. With the exception of like the ZV-E10, which I bought brand new when it first came out because we was in the pandemic Emmy. So you want to save a few hundred dollars? Get those day 31 purchases from those people that haven't done a daggone thing with the camera other than try to get some views off of like, oh, I got the camera and whatever. I get, <laughs> I get so many cameras like that, brand new. The E1, guess what? I got this camera for stupid cheap. Guess who? MPB. Why? Because 5 a.m., 6 a.m., I'm refreshing the website. And I said, just, I said, let me just see. Let me just see if they have one real quick. I had already sent my stuff in. It was already being evaluated because they send you the emails or whatever. Um, you got to take the videos you see online about the trade-in times for a grain of salt. I just did this with them so I can verify from my own experience. That's why I said buy something. I don't care how much it costs, just buy something. Trade-in goes faster. Freaking ZVE1 for a day 31 buyer. Not finna get the full return money because they missed it. And so they wanted to get the most return from MPB, MPB KEH, five, something like that. I was just, I was like, let me just see. I typed in Sony ZVE1. Up comes the white chocolate storm edition of this camera right now. I said, I can rock with that white. And it was several hundred dollars off. So instead of paying $2,200 plus tax and some change, and still needing full frame lenses and all the ex extra other stuff. I got it for near, near nothing of what I would have spent. So I think it was, it was 19, it's like 1931 or 1951 or something like that. I said, I'll take those extra few hundred dollars. I said, matter of fact, I went right back to the website. I said, add to my trade in, please. Especially when you're doing a higher amount. They'll have somebody contact you saying, Hey, it's a pretty big order because they want number one, want the business. Number two, want you to hurry up and do the sale values change. That's why at least if you're going to, if you've been thinking about it, go start getting a trade in value now. So you got a, a serial number. And I think that lasts about 30 days. So it's, it's locked in at that price. I'm giving y'all all the juice right now. Okay. So I had that locked in. Another one was, that one was about to cycle out. I started another quote. I'm like, just in case one fallout, one of these gonna hit. And I was only doing a sale at first cause they didn't have the ZVE ones. That mug popped up. I said, I said, I took a screenshot, <laughs> serial number circled it, sent it early in the morning. I said, can you get this one for me real quick? He said, we just took it off. It was off the website instantly. That's the secret sauce. You want some of the best of the best cameras, get them day 31 purchasers who know the camera good and gosh darn well ain't for them. Didn't really have the money to afford the trade in anyway. So they like, I got 30 days and they forgot. And Best Buy and b and and Amazon said, you're not getting full price for that <laughs> return. Matter of fact, it's past the return period. You got to keep it. You can sell it to us though for 40%. So now y'all know the juice of the juice. Just letting you know. All right, let's get into... Uh, some more questions. I just want to, I hope that helps somebody hit the like button, hit the heart button, hit the somebody's button, hit the, throw me some lightning bolts, some storm lightning bolts. If you don't know why you always see lightning bolts in the brand, it's because I love storm. Storm is my shero. Okay. Storm got me through the thick and the thins in the pandemic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So say so become a B cam now. So here's the only thing with that. Also Jay's tech view is that when you, here's why I got rid of everything I'm using a ZV uh, E10 right now, uh, that I'm using for B roll and stuff like that. Cause I need something, but I knew this camera's going to come out. Here's the difference between it. 
it's not that really color grading because it's close enough that you can make those minor adjustments. It's the efficiencies that drive you crazy when you have one that's got different menus or you got when the one that's got better menus. You now used to in clear image zoom, the new cameras have eye autofocus and these ones don't. You know what I'm saying? In clear image zoom, which was never a problem for me because the autofocus was always great. But if you got people coming in and out of the frame and a bunch of other stuff, excuse me, stuff, then it might be a problem. It never was for me as a solo creator. Uh, so FYI, saying compared to the Fuji XS20, um, let me be very clear. I like all the brands. You can't pick up a camera now and it be bad, but allow me to say this. Do not get caught up in this. I'm switching because it don't have one thing that I want frenzy that looks cute online because it's expensive as hell. It's completely inefficient to have two different camera brands and none of these people that are talking this stuff like that in the comment section, these keyboard warriors make money from their gosh darn content. I built my brand on a five and $600 camera. So I'm speaking from what I know. So be careful about like comparing different brands, like find you a home with a camera brand, which is like for a long time that was with Canon. I tried Panasonic, you know, I've, I've tested Fuji, I've tested Nikons and I'm like, I don't like those personally for my personal use. And I'm like, I'm not doing this back and forth. I know y'all not for me because you just, it just don't feel right in your gut. It don't feel right. So when you find some brand, I'm talking about Sony's today and I'm gonna pull up the Fuji in a minute, but find you a home with the brand and then just stick, be still. Cause it's like, oh, I'm going to Panasonic. I'm finna do, and you gonna look cross-eyed with that blurry focus that can't hold you. Can't hold a cup of water, okay? I'm just saying, I'm telling you what I know. It's improved autofocus. I bet it is till it ain't. When you pull up this Fuji though, I'm just sharing a little love with you cause I love y'all. I want, I want the best for you. Uh, let's go here, Fuji XS20, which I think are dope cameras. But I'm telling y'all the amount of times a clip is in focus versus when it ain't. And I'm using incorrect grammatical English on purpose here and being lazy in language. When something goes out of focus or you're doing an interview and somebody turned like this and it goes back here to John Coltrane instead of me and decide, cause it's like, oh, it's a dreadlock. We don't even know if that's a person no more. Let's go to John back here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then it comes back. I'm telling you them little annoyances that keep firing off on these other brands. Yes, they're improving. I'm just letting you know, it's not when you, in your real life use case, which is why I never switched to any of those other ones. I considered Fuji, but I'm like, the autofocus is not reliable. I like Canon and Sony. They are completely reliable. Let's look at the Fuji XS20. As Alan has asked, so 1299 versus, let's track this closer to the new one. Uh, 1398. So price wise, they are very comparable. When we go down here to the pri uh, to the highlight features, 26 megapixels, 4k 120, albeit with a crop 1080p 240, 10 bit 422, um, five axis image stabilization, blah, blah, blah. Mic headphone, 11 frames per shooting. If you care about that stuff, S log, S any tone user LUTs. And it's some other things I want to talk about in a video I've uploaded. It's not published yet. We got some other stuff to talk about. So let's go here. Five axis, 26. FYI, um, these other manufacturers buy their sensors from Sony, so you're probably going to use a Sony whether you want to or regardless. <laughs> X is just the interface. 6.2K, which is, now here's the, the big up to Fuji here. 6.2K at 30 frames per second versus, and 4K 60 frames per second are the highest frame rates on the Fuji camera. Again, remember, that's 1300 bucks. Now we go over here to Sony for 1398. You have 6K that's down sampled into the 4K 120. That's the highest that you can get. Still 422 10 bit or whatever. If you care about 6.2K and 30 frames per second, if you got the girth in <laughs> an SD card, forgive me, a V90 SD card, because I am beside myself with the how much I'm about to have to pay Dropbox in unlimited storage fees now for the team and myself. And I'm like, what, what am I doing with this 10 bit? I'm telling y'all, this ain't no joke. The camera is the cheap, the cheap thing. God, Lee, we gonna buy eight cameras by the time we done pan Dropbox month over month. 
So, <laughs> shoot. Uh, listen, so 6.2K, 30 frames per second, and 4K, 60. It's good. It's probably going to look great. Again, uh, auto improved autofocus. How reliable long-term? I don't know. Um, video specs down here. Like I said, all of this looks great. Uh, now, here's a point that not is not always mentioned that I do want to discuss because I'm paying attention to this more and more. You got 50 to 360 megabytes per second. That also adds to your file size. When we go down here to the Sony A6700, uh, let us go on, go on down it. You have 30 to 280 megabytes per second uh, for you have some stuff in the, in the SI, you have 240 to 600 megabytes per second. So across all of these, you're getting up to 360 megabits per second. Now here's why this matters. When you are making a video and you're looking, it's not just the resolution. So like 4k versus 6k, that is more or less the container. Okay. The pick, the pixels, like when you have the megapixels and it's like, oh, it's only 12 versus 26 or whatever, you're getting more detail. I don't know about y'all. I don't need everybody seeing the zit on my face with extreme clarity all the time. <laughs> I don't mind if it's, it's less, a little less something of a smidge. You don't mind your business. You don't need to see everything. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. So that's, that's a thing. You're getting great quality on both of these sensors. They're more or less identical, more or less. Okay. But when you look at how much data is baked into, which is why I covered the, how many megabits per second it is for the file types. This is why on the EOS R Canon EOS R you saw even in 1080p because it was a higher megabits per second. You saw it perform better than some versions of 4k on other cameras. So this is something to consider. So should you use, this is the Fuji one right here. You're getting from 50 to 360 megabits per second. Uh, no, don't matter which one you pick, they all the same. However, you're getting a higher megabit per second with the Sony up to 600. So even if you shoot in 422 10 bit, this is going to, I'm telling y'all these storage files ain't no job. I'm beside myself with SD cards and how many. Hey, hey, listen, you want a Christmas gift? Give a fellow creator an SD card. A four, uh, let me specify, V60, V90 SD cards. All right. All right, so there's your comparison for the XS20. It's because you travel too much. They need you to sit down. Um, oh, no, it's not. Because Jason Vong has been in gosh darn Japan. Okay, went to Yodabashi camera and all the rest, which I can't wait to go visit. Doc and I are supposed to go over there to Japan. I don't know when, but we've been talking about it. And I know he has another trip coming up, but yeah, I'd be out here in these real indigenous streets traveling. Okay. Running thine business. But here's the thing. Sony got my address. They could have, they could have told me hook a sister up. Okay. What, what do I, whose coffee do I need to make? Who, who, who do I need to buy white chocolate and give it to them for me to get an embargo camera? Cause that's all I'm saying entrepreneurs, content creating entrepreneurs. We need somebody you got photographers, videographers, cinematographers who represent for us, who represent for us. That's all I'm saying. Uh, GT retro world. Good to see you. Glad that you are here. It's been a while since I popped up in the chat. Hope you're okay. I am doing much better. I did need to take a lot of time off and I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been a content creator for a really long time. My first video I uploaded in 2016. I have not stopped until I stopped a few months ago when it was like right before my book uh, came out in March. And I was like, I'm exhausted. It wasn't like, oh, I'm burnt out. No, I'm, I was really tired. For those of you who don't know, you knew around the block, I have stage four endometriosis that introduces other complications. And most of the time I'm on very high medication and like up there. Today's a great day, I have no pain. Thankfully, I've had a few days with no pain. I didn't make like 13 videos in a row. So I just been running it, <laughs> but I'm like, ah, oh. so I, I just needed a break. I needed a break. And so I took that break. You ain't see no emails. You saw some videos on the channel, no social posts. Now you're starting to see that stuff pick back up because I'm like, okay, I just needed a break. I wasn't burnt out. I just was tired 
physically and mentally drained and hashtag a bunch of other stuff uh, and even some bouts of depression there but i'm doing good doing great um just the fyi for those of you that ask me people like you better not be dying or dead <laughs> i'm like no i just i need a break greetings to k walk comedy guess what y'all if you've been if you've been around the channel for a while k walk comedy is the latest winner for the free signed author copy of my brand new book the one right video she's going to get a copy of one of these signed from me uh, and she was hating on the game we usually play when we do giveaways here um, which we've given away microphones we've given away one year uh, access to ecamm live which is what i'm doing this live stream with uh, we've get we've given a, a bunch of stuff a bunch of stuff merch shirts ecamm lives like and so she never won with the wheel of wonder so y'all give it up for k-walk comedy because she's the latest winner in our recent video giveaway for the uh one right video uh one right video yeah the book i'm thinking i'm like whatever it's, i'm a little tired <laughs> so we're gonna do a giveaway in this live stream fyi all right pro tip galore i got y'all i got y'all i got y'all what's up monty weaver good to see you brother glad that you are here um san just called me olu good to see you san duh give us the pro tip <laughs> Olu, i just want you to know your, your, your dms are are in the stuff i see in the the comment section i do recognize some of y'all from the comment section so i appreciate just want you to know i appreciate you i see you and i appreciate you leaving the comments uh liam's i think that's right again let me know if i'm saying that wrong freddie kano good to see you uh saying greetings white chocolate so excited glad i waited for the a60 for this ace i guess you mean a6700 i got you saying a6700 is a camera to grow with for years not sure about the zve 10. you know what's interesting the the thing with the zve 10 is it was packaged for creators that's why i love this camera so much this is a zve 10 right here because product showcase mode which fyi is not in the a6700 a few other things missing <laughs> in that camera as well but you, it's a way to get around it. I'll do a YouTube short on how to get around that if you get this camera. It's not, uh, it shouldn't be a deal breaker. I would miss it. I'm not gonna lie, I would miss it. But product showcase mode is not in this camera. But you had a lot of stuff that are just helpful in the process of creating content. When people say, I don't need it, I can just put it over my face and just do this and then it's fine. Let me tell you something. The amount of times over months and weeks of creating regular content especially when you get past posting one video per week and four shorts for the week kind of stuff. And you're like, you popping. You don't want to keep reshooting stuff. I, I promise you don't want to keep reshooting stuff or you peek around and you had the shot. You didn't hold it long enough for you to use it in the footage and you peek around the camera and it saw you and you like, dang, let me do this shot again. So now you like, okay, but is it getting the thing? And now you like, but you're trying to get your face in. So you like with the thumbnail, but then it jumps back to you. So you're doing stuff like that. Product showcase mode is helpful even in thumbnails. So as a real creator making stuff, headphone port, super helpful. Um, just the, most of the, the lack of buttons, which we'll get into for the A6700 real quick, because I did want to cover that. The lack of buttons compared to like the A6600 or like even the ZBE 10. I talked about this in the latest video. It's really not that big of a deal when you look at how many extra screens and functions that you got or are getting on this camera. So if we go over yonder to B&H photo, the back of the camera image. So let's start with the top down. So this is reminiscent of the A6600. You don't, uh, it is a little zoom rocker on there. So those of you that like that, you have that. If you don't want to, you can always turn it off, but you have your on and off button, right? So you got the record button up there. So they replaced that uh, with the C1 button and they put that on the side. So the body design really haven't changed much. You do have this difference, which is really dope because if you use the ZVE 10, if you use the a, a ZVE one or the ZV one for that matter, you see how much of a benefit it is to quickly switch and not the dial whole freaking Cupid shuffle turn and twist thing, but you just like photo. I need to get some photos at church real quick. Okay, let me get back to video. Or you're doing a talk, you're building your speaker reel, you're doing your thing, because maybe 
you had a goal this year to become a paid speaker. Maybe you have a goal to become a brand ambassador for a company that you love. And you need to put together some clips of you doing your thing so that you can send off a proposal. This is real stuff that creators do. You need to have access to because whether you believe it or not, brands check before they message you. So if you don't have this kind of stuff rolling and for them to see you at work, then what? So to quickly snap from photos, you can hand your camera off a camera like this, quickly snap from photos, then quickly snap to video. Then if you're vlogging, it becomes even easier because these are the three most common modes that you use. So having to completely turn and go all the way around, I love this design for this. Um, it's, I think this is going to be super clutch for a lot of people. Now, here's what I would miss as an, uh, a former A6600 user. This on AF on is from these A7C. I like the, the A6400 and the A6600 had a switch and a button. So if you had it in the up position, that could be one specific mode for that button. And then you flick it down and that would be another mode. If you watched any of my A6400 or A6600 stuff, one for, would be for clear image zoom. The other one would be for photos. It, it depends on what I'm doing. Um, so it could be to jump between APS-C and, and full frame mode or whatever. I'm, I would miss that. However, here's why it is not that big of a deal for this camera or a camera like the E1 that doesn't have uh, as many buttons either. So this is the Sony ZV-E1. So not that big of a deal. It's still, it's just a C2 button instead. What I found to be true, you don't care because you got a bunch of digital buttons. You have a home menu that is a touch screen that's touch screen enabled. You have the my menu that's right up front now. It's not at the back of the menu. So in the new menu systems, it is your my menu. And then you have the home, which is basically all the stuff that you would want quick access to anyway. The stuff that comes on the side of the screen that, yeah, you can't change it, but it's most of the stuff that you will want anyway. And like I shared in the, what was it like yesterday's video or day before yesterday's video, maybe, or something like that. Record button is, I promise you, I didn't, I thought it was dumb at first. I didn't think you would use it. Having those record buttons come in on the side and other stuff, product showcase mode, again, not in this camera, but in the E1, product showcase mode is there to switch between animal, uh, I was about to say, <laughs> yeah, switch between animal, human, birds, insects, and you're doing all that. It's just a tap of a button because it's already on those side menu panels. You need to see more of your frame, you swipe it out the way and it's gone. If you want to completely turn that off, you can. Then you can just hit the function, quick function button. It comes up for your quick function access stuff. If I cannot confirm this yet, but if this A6700 is anything as far as the customization like the E1 is, let's see if they got some pictures on here about it. Uh, you compared to the ZV-E10, A6600, A6400, A7C, A7 IV, compared to any of those other cameras, you get way more customization in your quick function menu. All of these are use case scenarios. They don't have the photo I'm looking for. Uh, I'll have to wait and I am going to ask Sony to send me a camera an a6700 so we can cover it on the channel. Uh, we, we uh, might pick up one. It depends, but we definitely going to cover one regardless. Going to do a lot of videos on this, but you have way more uh, stuff that you can access on the screen in the quick function menu. So you really don't need a ton of buttons because you're already getting them digitally. And the fact that you can bring them in when you need them, get rid of them when you don't, it's not stuck on the screen. All of your icons and stuff have further moved out the way you're getting way more of your quality uh, of the video stuff. Unfortunately, um, where's my thing? I think I'd retired it from the desk. You don't have the remote, so I can't show you like I usually would on my A6400 and A6600 and all that stuff. You don't have the IR for the infrared remote. That's another something that's missing from all recent cameras. Uh, sub $2,000. So I can't show you and control the camera remotely. It will have to be Bluetooth, which I think sucks because you don't get as many customizations and functions. So I'm sad to see that go away. Um, there's some other questions and stuff that people have about what's what. Let me go through the comments real quick because I know it'd be 30 minutes later. 
nothing's changed <laughs> and we just get in the comments so let me go through those real quick if you got questions whether it's about the camera another camera or something like that all questions get answered you don't have to do a super chat or a buy me a coffee but if you want to i won't say no <laughs> and shoot and if you want to buy me a white chocolate bar i think i'm gonna change my buy me a coffee to a white chocolate bar if you want to may the lord bless you and keep you always uh c davis saying uh, lol road listen i'm road i think i think i'm good okay i think i'm gonna choose dji I'll, i may keep the roads but i don't i don't think they're gonna be my primaries anymore that quick because audio interface like not audio interface that's a, a thing but interference noises i've never had interference noises with my mics before ever i get ready to record the day i recorded uh, like five hours worth of content it was just non-stop shorts videos podcasts all of it b-roll everything uh the roads interference when i tested them thankfully due to the headphone port which you do get on the a6700 i could say <laughs> like oh this is a problem i can't use this let me switch and thank the lord i still had the dji's so i think i'm going with dji i i, I want to love road i love road but the ability to remotely control the audio from somebody that's on somebody else and all that stuff, it just, I'm just going to go with the DJ eyes. I'm so annoyed with the whole situation. What is up? Simply all it's good to see you. Glad that you are here. Uh, what is up? Mr. Camera Junkie. Good to see you saying still trying to master my ZV E10. I'm a long way from a big girl camera. Well, I'll put it to you like this. Yes, it is very true that for just about any creator, that may watch this video or maybe considering upgrading or whatever. I don't think we're at the stage, honestly, this is not to get anybody to buy anything. If y'all know me, been around for, I'm, I try to get you to be frugal about what makes sense to buy and what doesn't. Um, there are some upgrades that you'll make that are for efficiency purposes. The E1 wasn't, me getting into the E1, which you're looking at right now, my Sony 35 millimeter F1.8 lens, uh, it wasn't because <laughs> I wanted to go to full frame so bad. I just, you know, it wasn't about that. Efficiencies. We don't have to use Catalyst Browse anymore. Unless it's something that's really shaky or we're getting footage from somebody else of me doing something. And then we need to stabilize it if they have like the uh, ZV-E10, E1. This A6700 only doesn't have dynamic active. So if you missed that earlier, does not have dynamic active stabilization. I cannot deal with that anymore. All cameras must have dynamic active. This is my personal opinion. It's got to have it. Um, because why would you not use it? It's freaking amazing. You get active, which is much, 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 much better. But you can still use Catalyst Browse on top of that. So not all upgrades, K-Walk, Comedy, Principal Walker. My pen went out. I ain't seen you in a while. Hopefully I see you at Ecamm Camera Camp that I will be a camp counselor at. So I hope y'all coming in October. Uh, and if you come see me, I should have a gift for you. If you're part of the glad gang, I should have a gift for you. So uh, if you're coming to Ecamm camera camp, come see me. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be a camp counselor. I will have a gift for the glad gang community. Come and see me. I mean that. Um, so principal Walker, I hope you'll be there. Gosh, darn it. But yeah, it's like at this point, upgrading a camera is not just about the features or I don't need 4k 60 or 120. I don't need 10 bit. It's not about the needs now. I think all cameras across all brands help you to meet the needs of what you want and what you need. However, what are you running to efficiency wise? That's why I said in the community tab, prime day kind of sucks now. Cause it's not really, it's like they go to the basement, get tripods. That's already like $12 and they not plastic. Fantastic. They just plastic <laughs> and they put it on sale for like eight. You know, it's like Prime Day is not as fun and as generous as it used to be. The four, four terabyte SSD drives by Samsung. If I, yeah, Samsung, best deal of the century right now. So you see a few things, but you don't see a whole, whole lot. That's why I said, look at what efficiency wise you need to upgrade. Are you running into issues with your microphone? Switch. You need better XLR cables, more X, more USB cables, stuff that you need to switch out every year. Switch. You need SD cards, get them. You need a better mouse get it something went out like i this last trip a bunch of gear was just falling to pieces <laughs> i ran that stuff hard batteries passed away i'm like we need to get another battery 
Is it more efficient to use an AC power adapter for a live stream so you can live stream from the Sony ZV E1 since 10 a.m. and it's now 4:28 p.m. I have not turned this camera off once. There's no overheating. I'd have to use what's the name of the show y'all what that looks like. But uh yeah, so it's like get stuff that makes sense efficiency wise. So I think as a content creating entrepreneur, as most of you are or will be, it's not about upgrading because you need certain features or not. I think the ZVE 10 will continue to be a great, great podcasting staple camera because you have the simple purpose. 4K looks great. It looks amazing. You don't believe me? Go to Becky and Chris's website, not website, YouTube channel. And look at what they, how they pair the A7S Mark III to the A6400 that they've been rocking since day one. Got the exact same sensor in the ZV-E10. So it's nothing lost quality wise. You may not need this for, like I don't need the 10 bit for in here or whatever. We're experimenting, we're trying, we're testing a bunch of stuff. But come the day when we need to do stuff, here's the difference. When like every year now, I'm just about updating my speaker reel. Every year it's like if I'm sending a proposal for something with a brand, we're customizing stuff. We're taking new photos, taking new headshots. Like I can show y'all some pictures that I took on the um, E1. Just the quality. It's just like, again, just that extra step in the boosting your brand. That stuff matters. Yes, skills go a whole hell of a lot longer than the gear, but I'm just saying like, so uh, updating the camera is not just the camera and features. It's like efficiencies and the brand quality and aesthetics. And how many pain points as a creator are you running into? Specifically, I talk about video on this channel more than photos ever. What are you running into? Well, how much time could you save? How much time could you get back to go back with your family or to make more stuff or get out of the editing bay in the chair and get back to doing the business? That's what I look at. That's why I'm like constantly switching. What's going to save me time? The E1 up there freaking up there uh so one car slot is a little disappointing it's a uhs2 sd card slot i've i've worked with the two card slots and again data ain't cheap i think <laughs> for the people that would use this camera in a more professional sense number one they probably have multiple camera bodies if this is the camera that you're trying to use to launch off into something that's why I emphasize use reliable SD cards regardless. Cause it don't matter if you got two card slot and two cheap, terrible SD cards. Not that you would, but I'm just saying, I've got these DMS like this is my SD card. It ain't working. I didn't tell you to buy that. <laughs> that is the trash bag random brand. I'm always telling you to avoid. So the expensive, good quality, reliable SD cards cost more money typically. This is a UHS two card slot. Those are not cheap, which means you need a V60 card or better as a UHS two, which means you're at least on the cheapest end, probably $60 for like, I think it's 64 gigabytes right now with the V60 by Sony for their tough cards. And you don't want to know, you do want to know. I, I want to show you, I want you to know, <laughs> let us, let us go down the rabbit hole of two SD card slots. And y'all tell me where, where, where this is at for you. So UHS two for a 128 gigabyte SanDisk extreme pro. This is a V 90 card, 119 bucks, 256 gigabytes, 239 bucks. Now, like I said, the cheapest is like the 64 gigabytes. You're not touching six. You've done a short, a couple shorts, a three minute video with no mistakes <laughs> for YouTube. Five minute video with no mistake at the high bit rate. Let us go back to exhibit a for the a 6,700. This is the stuff that you, you find out as a creator. Uh, and I just want y'all to be educated and aware 280 megabytes per second down here. You want to do the, the best of the best bees needs hall of fame. This camera can do SI four to two, 10 bit 240 to 600 megabits per second. You ain't touching much footage with a 64 gigabyte card. So it ain't like, I'm just gonna get a couple of these. All right, good luck. Lexar, may the Lord bless you and keep you always. We ain't touching you, <laughs> but Kingston, this is one that I'm, I'm, I'm rocking with Kingston. I saw doc using these. I'm like, let me give them a go. 
because for the value that's the bang for the buck right there the kingston ones so that's the one that uh that i recently got i wanted to test it to see if it was worth even getting any more i think i will but i do know i want to get some sony tough cards because having cards break once a year is not where it's at that's wasted money pro grade is another reliable one ish that just it seems like a half and half on that this is the v60 card 98 bucks for a two card pack that's great for 128 gigabytes v60 ain't getting you the full capacity of what this card can do so you're not going to even touch this up here this si422 10-bit not happening in this camera it's not going to happen on that sd card fyi it's going to say it does not meet the environment requirements or whatever kind of stuff so allow us to go into a v90 sd card prices and may the lord bless you and keep you all your days when you see these prices <laughs> so 233 again this is a v90 card 119 we already saw those 256 gigabytes uhs2 v90 from sandis 239 dollars for one card 256 gigabytes <laughs> good luck doing four videos and two podcasts ask me how i know <laughs> good luck doing that much and like you looking like we need to make the podcast shorter because uh we gonna run out of footage out of space here in a minute it's like so the podcast has been cutting i'm like we ain't doing no 20 30 minute we're gonna get like 13 17 minutes 13 17 minutes we hitting it and we out of it <laughs> that reference could be used for something <laughs> shoot so like let's just go and may the lord bless us and keep us all as we do a sony tough card real quick take a look at the v90 because i don't know what what cocaine some of these brands are on but 189 bu bucks if you want to do 128 gigabyte this is the v90 card the speeds and all this stuff will be fine you're getting a little deals right now you can see one oh 256 gigabytes you want to do them for for videos and two podcasts that you hella long winded about 400 dollars. and may the lord bless you and keep you always you want an sd card that ain't gonna break on you in a few months hopefully at an event Matter of fact, come back from event with a talk on it. That's 256 gigabytes and then have that card, that SD card break. I keep it around for my own benefit as a lesson to myself. Let me show y'all this. Just give me 2.32 seconds and I promise you I will, I will get back to the comment section. I just want y'all to know what's really happening with these higher uh, updates and such. Where are we at? Ecamm to the win. Let me, let me show you this real quick. I'm gonna have to block my face because I don't have product showcase mode. With the magic of Ecamm, do y'all see this card? This is a SanDisk Extreme 256. Oh, block the face. It does not have a lock on the side because this card is broke. It's broke. I don't know if you can see Yeah, It's broke. See that talking to me? It's broken. Now, it's footage on here from a talk. It's footage on here from an event. It's footage on here that is necessary. Thank the Lord, I was able to get the footage off, but I just keep this on the desk. Just a reminder, don't do stupid stuff like put everything on one card. 256 gigabyte is a lot. And so I was running that day. So it was what it was. I was filling cards left and right and it happens. But this is my lesson to myself to buy a better card. Thankfully, I got all my footage off, but it wasn't without some Jerry Riggin, praise the Lord for gaffers tape. Okay. Because, <laughs> but I'm like these, I'm, I'm running through the sand disc cards. This is not being hard on your gear. It's just using it, making content. If you look at the channel, most of my stuff is in here until I go speak until I do an event and you know, until I'm doing something like that, but good gravy, you know, I'm just letting y'all know. Uh, so the one SD card slot Leon is, yeah, it's not, it's not ideal, but my Lord, allow us to look at thine prices and reconsider. <laughs> you said slot real tough, like flossy Carter. <laughs> <laughs> Saying I want that dynamic act. I'm telling you, I will never not use a camera that don't have dynamic active stabilization. And I'm standing on that. It is that good because. I know I'm not the sh like when I'm trying to get these shots. I I know I'm talking with my hands. I'm walking. Plus size folks, you know we got that plus size shuffle. You know what I'm saying? If you got a little back fat, 
little arm swing okay you got the little arms you know you got a little shuffle i don't even know what it what it is or if it's just the the motion <laughs> but you got a little shuffle in your walk okay because when i was skinny i didn't have that shuffle put on some pounds you just you moving different <laughs> so you plus size you out there doing your thing some of that extra materials <laughs> as the southern grandparents would say materials is moving about so you shaking the camera where you want to or not i will never not use dynamic active because it saved my behind on the last video that y'all just saw and another video that's coming out i was so nervous recording this it wasn't nobody even around or no stuff like that but i'm just like i am so used to being in the zone in my office in a space or like i'm gonna sit down and do the thing and now we're introducing more dynamic content not to be a pun on the words but i'm like we're switching it up you got to do something different to keep your audience's attention or figuring out the things that they like what are they vibing with and so we've made we're making that changes in the content and i'm like man if this stuff come back i'm gonna be mad because you got 100 gigabyte file sizes or his file sizes from a long talk that you cannot upload to Dropbox because you hit the max limit. That is how, how big the stupid files are with longer form recording. So overheating ain't your problem. Like I said, I've been running, you're looking at the ZVE one right now. It's been running since 10 AM. It's 440. No overheating symbols, but I'm also using the dummy battery. So you're doing long form recording. This is your jam. You're not going to have that problem. You know what I'm saying? So. But that dynamic active brother, I will never not use a camera without it. Uh, let's see here. I was waiting to see the A6700 now saving for the, is it the E10 or the FX30? Or do you mean the E1 or the FX30? Um, I pulled up the FX30 as well. Let me go to that. The Sony FX30 is very close in price. Now here's where, like I said earlier, I think we are at the point to where brands are going to start making their own fans like Fuji did. Or you're going to have creator initiatives where people are making fans or are you going like Jason did Jason Morris, uh, shout out to that brother. He lets me use a lot of his footage. <laughs> Farouk. We don't have no footage from Farouk of iPhone though. So y'all pray for our brother because we usually have day one footage. I watch Farouk knows how this goes. Okay. He gets the camera. I watch the video. Somehow the footage miraculously shows up on my computer so I can show y'all his clips because we don't have the camera from Sony yet. Brother, I searched for brother Farouk. He did not pop up. So we have no footage from him. <laughs> so <laughs> when his video pops up, hopefully, hopefully, like I said, hopefully all right. Cause I'm like, where, what are we supposed to do? I don't even, I don't like using nobody else. I'm like me and Farouk got a thing going on. We as brother and sister. All right. And I'm like, man, so we'll see. But, <laughs> but, uh, as far as the E1, fx30 here's how you need to know i brought up the fan stuff here's how you you need to know if you need to go to this camera or not because of the fan let's put all the cinematic stuff to the side for 2.32 seconds 1798 is not the difference in price that's not the big deal and with this um xlr handle it costs as much as an e1 if you're doing daily creator stuff and I'm putting the E1 to the test to really see what's what, um, because all of the specs now are becoming more linear. So across the board, you're getting 10 bit, 422 10 bit. Across the board, you're getting microphone headphone ports. Across the board, you're getting better stabilization and, and digital as well as IBIS. Uh, so we're, we got great lenses. We got a lot of third party brands jumping in, Viltrox really uh, leveling up their game, all of that. So the difference is negligible now. We're looking at efficiencies. We're looking at use case. If you plan to do a ton of video podcasts, a ton of event recording, you're included in hot environment. I believe our brother, uh, over, let me see, let me grab your name again. Marine X. I, was, I think it was like the last time we were chatting on the stream, you, um, we're saying like you're in like a hot garage and stuff like that when you're creating content and stuff. Okay. E1 is not going to be the camera for you when we talked about that. Okay. So now we know we're going to hot environment FX three, something with a fan, something with better heat dissipation, a, be a bigger camera body or a camera like this one with a thing in it with a fan in it. 
because I don't think even with an external fan or putting a box fan even on the E1 in a hot environment, hell hot heat environment like that, no airflow, no nothing. I don't. I just don't think it's going. It, I just don't think it's built to handle that. Let me clarify. Asterisk. I do not think Sony made any adjustments to the camera to fix any of that so that it could be a line drawn in the sand of what you get and what you don't get if that makes sense so if you know this is what you need go for the gold yeah you're not getting the evf yeah you're not getting a lot of the creator friendly ish function yeah you're not getting maybe some of the more photo specific stuff that you would ideally like but if video is going to be your jam, you're handing this off to a videographer, a cinematographer to make content for you. Let's say you're going to make a documentary. Let's say you're doing documented stories for your nonprofit or for um, your event space or for your church and your ministry work and stuff like that. Something like this is more uh, going to fit that bill. Are, are you going to see any of these creator updates and stuff like that? Probably not. They just did one to the camera, but I don't think you're going to see like a bunch of stuff. You're not going to get AI and the, the follow tracking and all this stuff, which I tested in my last talk in Spokane, Washington. It did well. The only thing that I find that's weird about the auto reframing thing, um, you need to bump the shutter up a little bit more, which you naturally may do depending on the environment, but you need to bump the shutter up a little bit more just to account for the motion blur to remain this somewhat equal. Okay. If you're using, it's another benefit. I don't know is in the AC 700 or not. I got to figure this stuff out. I still have, I got to dig through some stuff. I got to read the manual and find the answers that nobody's posting about yet, because I don't know if like the, if you used to pay attention occasionally, you would see back here, slight banding. You'll see this in the next video that we release might be tomorrow. Maybe it'll be I don't know if we gonna should we I don't know if we should do a Friday live or not. I don't know if I should bring those back back like that. But you used to see banding, so those black lines. Naturally, at the event, because when you go into hotels, event spaces, and all the other stuff, you have banding because those lights are not built for video, they're built for aesthetic. So when you saw me at that office space in like yesterday or whatever I posted, whenever I posted that video, <laughs> I've had to turn on the setting so you don't see banding and lines weird lines like if you're on an airplane you're documenting your experience or whatever let's say you're working with a brand that's flying you out capturing footage I'll, i'm giving y'all i hope y'all picking up some of the stuff i'm talking about because as you build a package that you want to present in a proposal to a brand so that you can get paid for what you're doing instead of just saying hey chapstick sent me this chapstick so we're not crusty dusty out here like <laughs> like i want to show the experience of why it's important like when you wait i go to sleep with a mask on if you know me personally so i can get my ugly sleep on the plane i'm not gonna have nobody taking a picture of me my mouth all drooling on your shirt i'm not going out like that all right so i wear a mask simply to go to sleep so i can get some good ugly sleep uh, so it don't matter what i look like you better believe when i take that mask off when we land in that plane, <laughs> Chapstick, that would be part of the story of the experience. If Chapstick was hiring me to like they sponsoring a video and I'm sending them a proposal, I would have shots of me doing that stuff. If you saw at the beginning of the stream, cause I'm like, cause we not finna be out here. Um, I mean, I don't, social media marketing world. I was up there like, yeah. So if you got questions, meet me in the, all them clips would be in there. 422 10-bit, whatever. So if they wanted to buy from me clips of my footage of their product in high enough quality for broadcast and ads to survive the compression of the social media packages and all the other different stuff that's popping up, brands will buy footage from you if it's good enough quality. You don't have to be a cinematographer or videographer. It just needs to be good couple ways you can maximize on some of the stuff that you're doing so something to think about if you want to work with a brand I don't know get some b-roll clips of you using and talking about their stuff I promise you people watch you and your brand long before you ever realize that they will never say a peep and so when some of these brands send you those emails and they say we've been watching your content and you'll know 
from certain things that you did or certain stuff that you say. Like, if you've been around the brand, you know I say white chocolate. You know I say it's better than dark chocolate. You know, I talk about me putting chapstick on in the middle of me doing stuff, or you just see me doing it, or the planes and whatever. When they reference those things, you know they watch your stuff for real, for real, and just not some copy and paste email. Just putting y'all on game for how you can start to monetize better in what you're doing. But that I will now, I will never not use dynamic active brother. Um, all right. Let me see, sir. Saying Lee is on fine. Who? Y'all better not be hooking up in the chat. This is a family friendly event. <laughs> so if A6700 don't have dynamic stables, it don't. I'm telling you right now, Olu, it does not. So that was the difference for me. I, as soon as I saw that, I said, mm, and I will never not have a camera. It's a great camera. You'll see a lot of content on the channel about it because I think it's a fantastic camera. If you're doing mostly 90% of this live streaming on a tripod work, whatever, even a monopod, you're good to go. But it just, it's just a, I think it's a artificial limitation because the sensor has the AI information in there. I just think at the price range, it's going to be the differentiator. They want you to get the E1. They're going to want you to get probably the A7C Mark II that is going to be at that $2,000 range plus because the, no, the lenses are back of that. Again, the SD cards you're going to have be in the SD card game, UHS-2 gang anyway. So, but I'm like, I don't have dynamic. We ain't talking. <laughs> Not for like me running and get like, nah. Uh, some other things, FYI, that it doesn't have. No framing stabilizer, which if you saw in the video that I posted either on Monday or Tuesday of this week, where I was filming with Ray Edwards. Yes, the Ray Edwards of How to Write Copy That Sales. The one that has worked with uh, incredible, incredible people and has done amazing things. That Ray Edwards. We spent, for the most part, the full day together. And so he's walking. I'm like this. And I'm just documenting this process of what's going on in the company. And so I'm trying to think, like, is he opening the door for me? Am I going to do, like, and so there are some parts of the clip that didn't make that vlog portion of the video, but I'm holding it. And so he knows he's all into the camera stuff. And so he knows. So I sent, like, um, he's like, let me see that clip. And so we're looking, he said, that looks like a daggone gimbal. I said, I know, I promise you, I'm not that good <laughs> to hold the camera that steady. It's not, we got some wiggle and a jiggle going on. Okay. The back fat, the back fat is going to give you a little extra wiggle and a jiggle. It's not going to stabilize. It's going to shake a lot. Okay. <laughs> so I'm walking like this. And so I, I know this camera is bouncing like crazy tripod shots, just like tripod steady, like shots between the active, which you do get active stabilization in the a 6,700, but shots like this, where I'm just like this and he's moving or whatever, it looks stupid smooth with dynamic active stabilization on. That's why I'm like, I would never not use this. So it doesn't have the, the framing stabilizer to keep that person in the center, regardless. It doesn't have product showcase mode. It doesn't have the new vlogging mics. If you care about that, um, I find that to be most helpful when you need to redirect it from being behind the camera. Uh, so there'll be a video that comes out of me showing you how to work with like weird lighting situations. Um, if you're doing like some kind of office space or whatever you're visiting, whatever go to a co-working space, stuff like that. You can't always control the lighting. And so I was showing how to do that on the ZV one. And so I'm behind the camera and I'm like, I don't feel like unplugging my mic, turning it around so that it sounds like this instead of weird. So I just unplugged the microphone and used the re and redirected it to the rear. You don't have that. They put the, the microphones on the front of the a 6,700, but I'm like, Y'all didn't sold me on too many good features. I didn't know I needed or wanted, or, you know, would be so valuable to me. I'm like, so I don't have that either. FYI it may not be a big deal for everybody. You do get the in-camera LUTs. It's dust and water resistant, uh, a little bit brighter viewfinder. It gets the Z battery. You have the 422 10 bit, you have HLG, you have 4k 120, albeit it has a larger crop, the touch menu. You do get the AI tracking in and the uh, auto focusing and stuff like that. So you get a lot, you get the auto reframing. So that's a huge thing. I was looking for that. It has that in there. So you get a lot. It's just a little bit of those things. That's not going to be in there that are work aroundable. It's just a matter if it, it, you know, it's for you. If you like me and Olu, you like, <laughs> I need the dynamic. 
what is up richard good to see you glad that you are here saying the a67 is out now brother stall 2213 good to see you glad that you are here um yeah it dropped this morning and so fyi this is the the video uh sample video if you will it's not gonna cover the specs and all of that or whatever but yeah the the a6700 came out today uh and it is dope i'm just covering some of the differences in like real real look in english real world use case that you may run into or not but i think regardless this camera is freaking amazing if, if the e1 didn't exist this would not be a question of whether or not it's like i would have it or get it or whatever but it's only because the e1 exists for me personally that we're even like it makes a difference you got great lenses you could use full frame or aps-c you're getting clear image zoom with eye autofocus one feature i do want to test and see that's on there if i think it's the the video i don't know if i'm dropping another video tomorrow I don't know if I'm doing that. And then a live stream on Friday. So I'm not sure yet. It's either going to, we're either going to post a video on Friday or we're going to live stream on Friday, but it's like 10 hitting hidden features that's in the ZVE one that like I've seen zero people talk about that only through having the camera that I found like, like all of this extra stuff that's baked in there. One of those hidden features that I hope is in the a 6,700 camera is when you are in manual focus. So let's say you have a noisy lens and a busy body of a lens like this Tamron 20 millimeter. I really enjoy it. I like it. It's my daily driver, but she is noisy and the constant refocusing, like you see the mode, like the thing doing its thing or whatever. It's the internal focusing or whatever. So it's not externally doing anything, but she just noisy. <laughs> so. I don't want all of that pulsating and it trying to figure out and it look like it's juking on the street. I don't need all that. Calm down. So there are times where <laughs> I just want to do manual focus to stop it. Like for B roll shots, um, especially if you're racking focus, going from one object to another or one person to another or whatever, you still have auto focus enabled. You don't have to change no settings. There's nothing special. You have auto focus when you're in manual focus. So you can tap that person in manual focus and I autofocus enables and it will track that person because the autofocus tracking still works in manual focus. So if you are a podcaster or you are doing remote, um, production work, not even, well, I won't say remote. If you're doing like production work in general, uh, you're doing recording podcasts for people you're doing uh, events and stuff for people. You can have camera A, camera B, and a wide angle camera to get air, both of them. Hit that person, It no matter what they do or how many motions they have, you never have any even slight hint of a something of it, the potential of it auto focusing on anybody else but that person. And no matter if they sit forward or whatever, they will continue to stay in autofocus, even though the camera has set it to manual focus. It'll follow the person, ignore everything else. Like that's the stuff that I'm like, why ain't nobody talking about this? <laughs> what the, it is a bunch of stuff in the camera like that. I'm like, like I said, who's making cameras for us. So all I'm saying is go to the Sony website, go to customer service, tell them at Diana Gladney needs to be on this embargo list. I don't know who I need to bribe with white chocolate but let a sister in the door. We got to vet some more content or what, what we need to do, what, what we need to do. Cause I can get the cameras after the fact. I just trying to, you know, I just, I just want to build a relationship with you, Sony. That's all I'm saying. Just a little, little more better. What is going on? Rocket rolls vlogs. Good to see you. Glad that you are here. What is going on? James Hicks. Good to see you. Glad that you are here, brother. Said I use the Sony ZVE 10. The ZVE 10 is well, loved around here figuring ish out <laughs> like that channel name zve 10 right here so this camera would never not be a good camera it'll be great for podcasting it'll eventually drop to probably something in the circa of a five to six hundred dollar price range and it'll just continue to be a steal top down camera shots podcasting cameras uh, for extra angles backup camera shots uh, you got the ac power adapter that is made by sony 
that you can use for the Sony ZV-E10 eye autofocus product. Like it'll never not be a great camera. A microphone and a headphone port for goodness sake. Everybody's like, well, it's got a micro HDMI, be still. Get somewhere and sat down. Those, you know, the people complain about micro HDMI, they didn't get whoopings growing up. They didn't get whoopings growing up. Get somewhere, sat down, because when you're doing any kind of live streaming or HDMI, where are you going? If you're doing something with the, like you have a monitor, you're doing videography work, get the small rig cage, get the small rig HDMI, full size HDMI to micro HDMI that locks it in place. End of conversation. Stop playing games on the internet, okay? <laughs> it's fine. Said I just bought the ZV-E10 today on sale. How much did you get it for, Frank? You get to see you glad you're here. How much did you get that for? Um, said I have a problem with Sony losing focus during live streams. You uh, probably need the video that I did. Uh, we figured this out on a live stream, actually. It was actually, um, oh, what's my brother's name? Let me go to Instagram real quick so I can give our brother credit from years ago. This was Walter Jeanette, because he had just commented on the, uh, on one of my Instagram videos. Walter Jeanette figured it out. It was between the A6400s, a little bit before the ZV-E10 came out. And if you were doing 4K live streaming, you needed to enable the 4K output settings or whatever. It's a couple things you probably just need to change, so it's the same with the ZV-E10. Either when you plug in the 4K output, let me trace my memory here. Go through the 4K output once you connect to HDMI. So let me start from zero and go from up. <laughs> start over. If you're live streaming in 4K on the A6400 or the ZV-E10, same camera internals. Once you connect uh, 4K output on, it's a couple things that you might need to change. One of those things was the ability to record internally in the camera at the same time that you're live streaming. So right now on the ZV-E1, I could be recording instead of uh, only live streaming, even though Ecamm is gonna give me a recorded file with this. When you have that feature enabled, for whatever reason in the A6400 and ZV-E10, it disabled eye autofocus. Well, the A6400, excuse me, doesn't have eye autofocus, it just has face detection autofocus. So that would disable. So if you're having issues, that probably is it. You need to make that change or it could be something like the smartphone or something is on. If I'm not like pro tip real quick, um, it also saves battery life. When I'm not transferring files or whatever on my camera, I put it in airplane mode. I get extra jump in battery life um, when it comes to the use of it, and this is for any cameras for a long time, I've been doing this on it. Um, I just leave it in airplane mode because it turns off Bluetooth, it turns off Wi-Fi and stuff, especially if you're not using it. Um, and don't drink the Kool-Aid about this USB 4K live streaming. Yeah, it's really great when you're traveling because you're probably only gonna do an hour or less live stream, but it, real streamers, regular streamers that stream on a regular and consistent basis, do what I'm doing right now. You have an AC power adapter with a dummy battery, or it's connected via USB-C for power, and you're live streaming via HDMI, like with a capture card or something like that. Why? Because you get number one, more options. Number two, you're not worrying about, which is a, a issue in the A6400 and in the ZV-10. The battery, even if you start at 100%, the battery is consistently draining, even though you're getting power to it. It's not enough to, to keep it at 100%, for exa example. That's why the 4K USB streaming long-term past an hour is inefficient. No regular live streamer is gonna keep jumping up, popping out the battery to putting a fresh battery just to do it via USB-C when you have a Sony AC power adapter for those cameras specifically. So, this hundred bucks or something. That's why I gave y'all a bunch of tips earlier about leveraging some of the features in the cameras that you have to build up your brand portfolio. Uh, another video that we're getting ready to do on the channel is how, cause I noticed this is a problem in working with clients, talking to friends and stuff. Y'all are not recording your own B-roll. If you notice in my videos and it was one comment, I wish I could find it. 
a guy that is like, he was a regular commenter on the channel. He said, I like your videos, but he said, it's way better when it's just like, it's B roll from you versus B roll from like story blocks or something. I said, bet. Cause I received that. So this is where I say, learn to listen to sometimes, uh, the quiet majority over the loud minority. Everybody's like, this is a great video, great video, great video. That one tip took the quality of the, what we're doing and like the expansion of the ability to have reference and re referenceable material that we don't have to borrow from any fellow creators. Cause we own that, that you can sell clips for. And you know what I'm saying? Like you, it's so many, it was so many levels to that. I'm like, you're a thousand percent correct. I said, we need to start using less than 10% stock footage B roll in videos across the board because it's some stuff we just not going to have. I'm, I, you know, my, my friend India got a drone. God bless her. Cause I run my shopping carts into old ladies at the grocery store. So I, I don't know if a drone is in the carts for me right now, <laughs> I need to mind my business and you know what I'm saying? I'm like, so I'm like, mm -mm. but you have clips of you doing stuff or whatever, or when you're doing an ad for a course that you're selling or whatever, you need clips of you doing your thing. You want to sell a brand on how well you can do stuff. Stop trying to do it on their dime. Do it on your own. You already invested the camera gear anyway. So we built up a B-roll library. That's why we can reference clips of me doing this, me holding my book, me holding the camera, me doing a live stream, me on a client call, me on like all these different things, me doing a talk. We have clips of everything. Cameras like this, this battery for this, this comparison of this, this camera on the scale, everything. And we built it up progressively. It's not an overnight thing. We've been doing this for the last two years, building up this library of natural B-roll is what I call it. And third party B-roll, because there's always a, a use case for it. It may, it's important to have access to, but it shouldn't be the main thing. A little extra sauce for y'all right there. Um, Rocket Rolls vlog saying, I've been riding, riding it out with the A6000 for months since my ZVE-10 was, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. So now I need to decide if I want the AC700. I hope that whoever stole that camera from you, it is poison to anything that they touch until they do better and do right. Like for real, for real. Um, it was a, it was a Chris Howe had his ace. He had like, I mean, I think it's like $17,000 worth of stuff stolen. Brother Roberto Blake, he had something like some absorbent amount that was like $20,000 worth of gear and stuff. Cause it's all of your things, all of your footage, your SD cards, everything. It was so much stuff. Lenses, my gosh, G master lenses are not for the faint of heart. <laughs> And so he, had, he had, like had his whole bag like stole at event. Chris Howe out shooting content, whole bag stolen. So I hope that it becomes poison to wh whoever stole it until they do right. Chris Howe thankfully had like all these guys, if you're out doing stuff, get insurance for your gear. I have insurance on my stuff. So yes, get insurance for your stuff. It does matter. They had their stuff stolen, but Chris Howe had, I guess the person who stole it figured out that you can report your serial numbers. You should have those from your purchase. Uh, I can't remember what the website is, but you can report your stolen gear um, for the serial number. So can't nobody, you can sell it one-to-one, -one, but if you search the serial numbers for used stuff, then you would know if it's stolen or not, which does happen. But you can't sell it to any camera stores. Pawn shops is going to, are, are going to check. Um, you know, cameras, like I said, local camera stores, even though how big or small, they're going to check. Um, and so, like I said, they won't be able to do anything with it if you report the serial number. Uh, unless they sell it one to one and that person just doesn't care, but I hope you get another camera and I hope it is a bigger blessing to you than the E10 ever will be. Um, but, uh, I will say like, just look at your non-negotiables. It was a video I did recently on the channel about wasting money. Look at your list of non-negotiables. What are the things that your camera must have? And most of these cameras have it microphone port, headphone port, reliable autofocus, um, 4k, I like eye and face detection autofocus can be interchangeable to a point. Um, flip out screen so you can see yourself. Uh, great lens options, stuff like that. Like everything, it, all these cameras pretty much have that now. So now look at your efficiency efficiency list of things that you would want, need, or like. What are your goals for what you plan to do? Where are you going? Where are you going? Not just like physically, but where are you going? Where is your content going to take you? 
Where is your belief systems about to take you? How's this camera going to help you get there? Or how's it going to uh, get in the way? So that's why I said earlier, sometimes at this point, it's not really upgrading because of some kind of an issue with um, it being like your camera can't do something like it's not that big of a deal for but for some people between 8 bit 10 bit. But what is it going to make possible? Are you looking to hire a videographer in the next 12 months or six to 12 months? Are you looking to hire an editor? And they can make what you record or teach you or share with you what settings to change. So FYI to you editors in the, the chat or watching a replay. If you're watching a replay, you got this far. Thanks for being here. How are you helping your clients enhance their footage? This is one way I banked out when I was doing video editing work and production work. Educate your clients. Duh. You can tell them what stuff. Let's, let's hop on a call. Let me help you dial that in. Be a problem solving initiator that's one of our brand values in my company be a problem solving initiator so how are you helping to initiate problem solutions so how is this camera going to help you get to where you're going because a video editor or somebody that's maybe more well versed depending on where you're at how can they help you get to where you're trying to go and say make these changes go ahead and record it in s-log go ahead expose to the right 0.74 whatever with the lighting that you have because you don't need like they'll help you and then they grade your stuff because you don't have to some skills you can hire out. You don't have to acquire per se yourself. And if you're going to hire out to do stuff like that, again, like look at your list of non-negotiables and then look at your goals. Say, I love the ZV-E10, but the specs of the A6700 look great, especially the viewfinder for taking the odd picture. I can tell you it ain't that. It ain't all that. I love Sony, but let's, let's, call, let's call a spade a spade. The viewfinder ain't all that. As a bespectacled individual and you looking through the viewfinder, it's brighter but the resolution quality is not necessarily greater, nor is the LCD screen. So for certain things, it's like, yeah, you can look, but it's almost better to get whether it was a Jevin, Jevin Dovey. It's like something that goes over the back of the screen. So you can just look through like essentially, like it looks like a big viewfinder, but it's over the screen. And I think that's like 20 bucks. That's probably a better investment than only choosing it because of the EVF. Yes, the EVS is helpful in a pinch because maybe you don't always want to carry around an extra thing. I get that, but it ain't, ain't nothing to write home about. It's nice that it's there, but it ain't nothing to write home. I'm telling you from other cameras I've owned that has had that EVF It's brighter, but it's not necessarily better. I think that's one level that probably should have been improved, uh, that, that wasn't touched that well, unfortunately. If you're getting value out the stream, whether you got questions on the camera or something about your channel, something about video or whatever, let me know. I'm going through the comments and I am very behind, allegedly. Send out, send out yeah, take the odd picture, okay, and less crop will be a bonus for the tiny room. Yeah, wider lenses solve that. If you don't have like the Sigma 16 or like the Sony 11 millimeter F1.8, you also have lenses like the Samyang 12 millimeter F2, which is almost too wide because you start to get lens flaring on that lens. Um, not the 11 millimeter. That's why it's a little bit smaller, but on the Samyang, it's a little bit uh, more bulbous. And so you need to keep the lens hood even in, like indoors. Cause I was like, what is all of this flaring happening? Excuse me, indoors. I'm like, mm. So, so, uh, a6700 ZVE1, y'all know what decision I made. You're looking at the ZVE1, been live streaming, or well, I've been, had a call earlier, um, had a meeting and stuff. So this camera's been running since 10 AM. It's now 5, 12 PM central standard time. No overheating. I'll show y'all after the stream on Instagram. So, okay. Let me help you make this decision. a6700 or Sony ZVE1. Are you an average everyday creator? that works in air conditioner <laughs> or you don't plan to record 4k 60 or 120 for extended periods of time. You like a lighter camera body. Um, cause everybody's like, Oh, it's, it's plastic or whatever. They are using tanks of a camera. My friend Jared uses the Sony a seven S three with like the 12 to something, whatever the Casey nice that nice. That rig is heavy as hell. I'm like, brother, you got Superman arms. I'm not doing that. 
Like, I'm just not. That's too big for my little day carry bag. They ain't even gonna let me have that on the, air, on the airplane. They gonna be like, uh, you need to check that bag, ma'am. I'm not carrying all that. The hell with that. Cause I don't like my water bottle to be heavy as hell. And when I'm traveling in a bunch of stuff, I'm like, we need to consume this water. <laughs> different strokes for different folks. A6700 or ZVE1. Like I said, ZVE1, uh, if you prefer or need dynamic active stabilization, because that's not any the other one. If you prefer dust and water resistant body with the more rigid body style, A6700. You need a viewfinder of any kind just to have it. A6700. You want more megapixels for photos. A6700. You want mm, framing stabilizer. So as somebody's moving, they stay centered. Whether you're doing a talk, recording your own talk, you're hired to pay somebody else something, you, and you want to cut down on some of the work and panning and stuff. A6700 doesn't have that. So you're going to want to go with the E1 or maybe wait till the A7C uh, Mark II comes out and see if that has it. Uh, you love and enjoy product showcase mode on the ZV-1, on the ZV-E10, and you cannot see yourself not using it anymore. A6700 don't have it, so you're going to want to consider a camera that does, like the E1. Um, but like I said, I think the A7C Mark II may have some of this stuff, so maybe the E1's not quite right for you. You want that rangefinder body with E1 style features. Maybe the A7C will probably have like the A7 IV sensor or better, but it probably have the A7 IV sensor because I can't see them making another one. Well, maybe they, they might. Well, uh -huh. no, I think it's going to be the same sensor. So maybe a little bit more jello. I don't know what they might do with that. That's a, that's a tricky one because would they put the same 12 megapixel sensor? I can show y'all some photos if you want to see photos of uh what they look like if you care about that stuff on the zv um e1 because they're not bad i did see a comment on the community tab um i can't remember his name but he was like the the photos look too cinematic on the zv e1 i'm like brother for me that's a good problem to have I, it, look, it looks great um i even took a headshot for uh ray edwards like we all needed new updated headshots and i'm like well I like got this E1 here. I'm like, we can, you know, if you want higher megapixels, we can get something else or whatever. But he loved the photos. Let me pull them up real quick. Uh, and I'm going to actually put this in um, Ecamm just for discretion's sake. Let me save image. We'll call this Yonder. And we will pull it over here. So this is, this is a uh, headshot that I took of Ray. This was shot on the same that you're looking at right now or were until I put the <laughs> image up. This was the uh, 35 millimeter F 1.8 and the Sony ZV E1. Could I have adjusted for the highlights and all that stuff better? Yes, but I didn't have the step down ring for the ND filter. And this was like a, a quick, we need, we need a, uh, updated headshot stuff. So that was on the um, E1. I have some other ones for <laughs> of my friends that they may not like me sharing because it is absolute, it's them being absolute goofballs while we were uh, planning to do <laughs> some photos. <laughs> I'm gonna show this and I hope that they do not hate me because I'm, I'm just gonna do it. Let's see here, how can I not disclose certain details? Um, uh, I'll show y'all some photos in a second. Let me just, let me pull, let me, I'll just, let me just download. <sighs> okay. I'm just going to do it. Um, I'm going for it. All right. So I hope y'all forgive me, <laughs> but these are my friends, Tammy and Jenny. Uh, we work together, <laughs> work, <laughs> right. So these are some funny pictures that were like in between them doing stuff. <laughs> and She's gonna be mad that I zoomed in. But if you notice, like the quality is not bad as all at, at all. I'm sorry the stream had to be in 1080p because I had to downscale it to do uh Slack, not Slack, but um, what do you call it? 
LinkedIn and then the LinkedIn stream didn't work. So we were in 1080p for nothing, but we took some shots. And so in between getting good ones and them actually doing stuff. So this was a nice shot. I got them doing being actual, actual, uh, goofballs. And so you still have raw, you have like, if your photos care about that, if that you're into that, um, for whatever reason, you do not have the, uh, what is it? Is it the compressed raw? This is, these are just the JPEGs or whatever, but it was them being actual goofballs. Uh, I have to go back to some of the other ones, but those are some of the photos that, that we took. Even I took one, um, but <laughs> They're going to be so mad. I hope they don't watch this stream. So this is Jenny. <laughs> Who's just making faces and like, cause here's the thing you get, you're taking photos. You want to genuinely smile instead of the fake corporate smile. So it's like you get good photos when you are being more jovial and such. And so the photos came out great. Um, so you can even see like little stuff with her hair or, or what have you, like the details are there, but these look amazing. Everybody loved these photos. And like I said, we did some really um goofy ones that it's the last ones i'm gonna show you and i promise you i'm gonna get through the comments uh let's see here <laughs> okay these are our goofball shots that i took of them just like being silly and just doing weirdo stuff <laughs> i'm gonna hurry up and go through these <laughs> she was squishing her because tammy's taller than both jenny and i so she was like pushing down on her or whatever but these are just photos that we took I autofocus, all that stuff pops. Um, it looks great. Otherwise, like real photos, I'll show you real photos though, but it looks great. So I can show you <laughs> what the real, like good images and stuff, photos taken with um, the ZV-E1 look like, but they are uh, very nice and they look quality. I'll put it to you that way. Um, so, we'll get to the comments. Cause I don't, I don't think I got no more leeway with showing them weird, weird pictures of them being silly. Uh, so GG retro world saying, good to see you. You are feeling better. Appreciate that. Uh, Tamaria. Let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Tamar Tamaria. I believe that might be right, but let me know how to pronounce your name correctly. I love to get everybody's name, right? I believe in that. So <laughs> thank you for your self advice. Glad to be of service. Um, so you're staying with full frame and grabbing more like the Sony a seven four later. So, uh, great question, Gordon. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. I used to see you in the comments. Um, and so I, I'm going to stick with full frame. I do, I will not say that I won't buy an APS-C again, but it won't be my main camera. The ZVE one is going to be my main camera because, uh, even though the FX 30 was the ideal dream camera at the time that I thought would be that like, I'm done, like I'm done. Like give me two of these and I'm done. Cameras, uh, I'm like, we're not, we're not there yet. Like it's other stuff, the A7R Mark V came out. And it's like, once you see features hit a top line feature, they're gonna be shared below them. And so now I'm like, I'm gonna wait. It was a long wait, <laughs> like what was it, like six months or something? But I'm like, no, it's going to be some other stuff popping off. We're in this season of up updates for the Sony lineup. And so I went ahead and I'm like, I'm going to wait. So I probably, to be honest with you, depending if uh, the A7C doesn't have everything that like the ZV-E1 does, it will probably have a, a higher megapixel count. I don't know if the rolling shutter performance will be better, but I can tell you the video on the ZV-E1 is outstanding. It's just, I, I'm telling, like, <laughs> some shots, you know, you work hard to get, like, you know, okay, I need to account for the exposure. I need to do this. Oh, motion blur. Like your mind is firing off a bunch of different things, but there are some shots that I've gotten with this camera. I'm like, is that me? <laughs> Did I do that? Like, it's, I'm like, okay. I'm like, this camera's doing stuff that would be harder for me to do by myself. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm digging this because it means I don't have to edit anything. I don't have to worry about, uh, a bunch of stuff. Like I'm like, these look dope. I'm like, okay, I can roll with this. Um, so yeah, then you be rolling girl, <laughs> Matthew fate. Good to see you. Glad that you are here. 
saying, what are your thoughts on the camera screen resolution specifically for solo creators when adjusting color in the camera? Uh, Leon, good question. So uh, here's the thing. You have to adjust your eyes to your camera. And what I mean by that is when you're using even something like the Sony ZV-E10 or the A6600 or the A6, like you need to be used. That's why when you get your camera day one, for the next 30 days, use that camera every single day. I'm not kidding. Even if it's just to record your Instagram stories in vertical, you need to be recording with your camera because you need to be having the mother of all learning, which is repetition, working for you, not against you. And what will happen is if you're using your camera for the first 30 days and push it to the first 60, find a reason to record something, record shorts. So when you saw me recording a short every day, like a skits, uh, new shorts every day, a new skit, I'm like, I need to get used to using this new camera. I don't care if it's the exact same menus. I don't care about none of that. Because when you have, even though whatever the screen resolution is, it's like one point, whatever million, something or another's, I'm like, okay. Even with the E1, I'm like, the exposure is not quite where I want it on some shots. I don't care about histograms. I don't care about zebras. You need to get used to looking at your stuff to know in different environments, in different recording situations, with different lightings, with different ideas that you're recording, how is this going to work? We have a darker pigmentation. We have a darker hue. And so I'm like, how does this look on darker skin versus when I'm with Ray or when I'm with Tammy or I'm with Jenny? Because they're Caucasian. They're much brighter than me. So I'm like, oh, how do I expose for their skin and it look well? And how do I expose for my skin and it look well? Both of them came out great. Why? Because I'm using this camera nonstop. So you need to, and the reason why I say that is don't go and jump to the sunny weather setting for indoors just for the screen to be brighter. What I'm finding is, and this will probably be true on the A6700 as well, on a Sony ZV-E1, if you drop it from sunny weather mode to manual and then bump it up to like one or two brightness, which is not quite as bright as sunny weather, but brighter so you can accurately judge, you need to learn where your camera sits best for your skin tone, your environment, and your lighting to make sure that it's dope and it looks the way you want it and you're not having to reshoot anything. Because what I found on, for example, the ZV-E10, when I'm recording shots and I want it to look like how this shot looks right now, I need to overexpose plus 0.7 on my exposure meter so that I know everything is bright enough. I don't want to have to unnecessarily make adjustments to every little clip. I don't care what the screen resolution is. When I had the a7 IV, same thing. And I'm like, okay, what, what do you need in order for me to make this look right? And so on the E1, I'm finding 0 0.7 on the mo on the little meter at the bottom. It's too bright because now the white camera is like an infinity white and we now need to make adjustments because it's detail lost. Um, and yes, you can record an S-Log3 and may the Lord bless you and keep you always. I ain't trying to do all that. I got my own settings I like to use. So it looks like this. We can crank out content faster. I, I ain't, I'm not trying to be a videographer or a cinema photographer. <laughs> I just need my stuff to look dope and have flexibilities of an S-Log3 close-ish to, but know when I need to jump to something else when I do need, you know, the depths of the dynamic range that this camera can do. The same is true of any camera that you get. So what I find with the E1 is I need to be at like plus 0.3. Just drop it down a smidgen. So if, and that, I don't care what your ISO is. I don't care what your aperture is for your lens. I don't care what lighting invite, like you need to know how to, like what your camera vibes with for your skin tone, for the footage to look the way that you want. So I don't really care nothing about um, the resolution of the screen because when I need something better, I bought the Axum Simo, Simo or whatever it was called for like a hundred bucks. I think it they cost or I don't know. It's a little bit much for it to be a, pl uh, a, a plastic thing, but it's dope, not gonna hold you. And so I can use my phone. So that's now how we're getting um, the stuff of the screen and the menus and stuff like that. I just use that because that's way better than getting some $500 monitor that I really won't leverage and I get all the same kind of features. And my phone is a way better screen 
even though it's not the latest greatest iPhone 11, I don't need <laughs> uh, iPhone 14 pro for me to just look and see what I need to see. You know what I'm saying? So, um, different strokes for different folks, but I think regardless, 30 days, 60 days, 30 days, at least every day, touch your camera, be working it, annoy your, your spouse, annoy your kids, annoy the mailman, go indoors, go outdoors, go from upstairs to the basement, go from in the room to in the bathroom, like be working with different exposures and just look back at the footage, actually post some stuff, make some Instagram stories of you doing that because you're actually posting that clip. And when you look at it on your phone versus your computer, which monitors all kind of look different. If you got like a, a MacBook Pro or something like that, don't matter what kind, those seem to be seem to be more color accurate than whatever budget friendly monitors you may be using. And then throw that footage over to your phone and look at what it looks like. My stuff used to be janky as hell when I was first getting started because I didn't know that. And so I'm like, why do I look like a freaking Cheeto on my phone? But on the computer, I look fine. They look different. So <laughs> like I said, start using Instagram stories, 15, 30 seconds. Y'all can talk 15, 30 seconds about whatever you are doing in your brand. Post that stuff. You don't need no editing. Send it to your phone, 15, 30 seconds. So you can get used to using your camera. So that's what I think about screen. Ain't no big deal. Yurt, India, America, speaking Spanish in America out here in these real and digital streets saying what's popping fam. Good to see you. Glad that you are here, sis. I ain't doing nothing, man. Sandoval, oh, shucky ducky, we got a super chat. Let me, all right, Roadcaster, act right. <laughs> appreciate that, brother. Super chat saying V90 money, Kingston is my fave. I appreciate it. Let me tell you something. Because we need that. We need, the, look, super chat is available unto you. Buy me a coffee is available unto you. <laughs> if you want to throw a sister a dollar, holla for a dollar. Y'all remember that clip? Might be dating myself. Saying, Richard, what's good? Oh, you talking. Andy, I'm taking this comment off the screen. You talking? He ain't doing nothing. <laughs> saying road. Yeah. Saying ZVE1 looking crispy though. Andy, I can't be held responsible if you buy this camera. It's not my fault. But if you do, just get it through my affiliate link. A link. That's all I'm saying. Help a sister out. That's all I'm saying. What is going on, Bishop Fryer in the building? Listen, the gang came out today. The gang came out today. Good to see you. I'm so good, man, that warmed my heart. I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad that you are here. Another super chat in the building. Super sticker 699 from Richard saying character saying you rock while showing their pumping bicep. Thank you very much, brother. I appreciate it so, so much. Saying road is kind of like Congress. Let's pass this bill. <laughs> we'll find out what's in the light. <laughs> That's too, it's too close to home, man. <laughs> We out here struggling in America. Everybody like, oh, the American dream. No, America is the third world country. <laughs> We're just delusional about it. <laughs> Man, listen, that that comment's a little too a little too tough, a little too close to home. But shoot, I man. Y'all be praying for road, okay? Keep them lifted up in prayer. Put their name in the prayer request box. Even if you don't go to church, just go to a church. Put their name in the prayer. Just tip in. It's like, oh yeah, this brother road. Sister Rose, just drop their name in the prayer request box because they need a little help. Uh, saying you're going to want to use Catalyst Browse with the A6700 because you lose 10 bit. Uh, they make you upgrade to Catalyst Browse. Ah, oh, you know what? I'm glad you mentioned that. So, what he's saying here, thank you, Brother Marine X. I appreciate that. So, what he is saying is that if you are using 10 bit footage, and that 10 bit foot footage that you're recording in the Sony a 6700, which when we pulled this camera up over here and you saw in the specs, let's scroll on down. So the price is right. You got all this high bit rate. You're trying to do the bees knees hall of fame that this camera can do. Okay. 600 megabits per second. May the Lord bless you and keep you always, because if you record in these, these 10 bit, you can do four to uh, eight bit or 10 bit just color space and all that extra jazz. So you can do that, but the 10 bit won't work in catalyst browse because you'll need to upgrade. I couldn't remember what the difference was between regular Sony catalyst browse and like the upgraded version other than like the multi file transfers. But I am glad you brought this up because with the, I needed it most with the ZVE 10 
I haven't, I haven't, man, I haven't touched Catalyst Brows since I had the E1. I ain't even looked at it. <laughs> I'm just like, as soon as I saw that cat, I'm like, Judd, we're not finna have to use Catalyst Brows no more. <laughs> like, we for real was celebrating. I'm like, brother, we finna crank out so much more content. So if you, oh man, that's messed up. Okay, so you're gonna have to use Catalyst Prepare. I learned that with my FX3. I appreciate you sharing that. I'm going to make sure to give you a shout out when I mention that in the video, because brother, that's important. It says, send this four terabyte. I grabbed one that's like 73% off. Yes, it was a do uh, not dollar. Whew. It was 199 bucks. So yeah, that matters. Alan Jones, super chat. Thank you so much, saying Thank you, D, for sharing. Uh, plus the quality stream. I appreciate that, brother. A whole, whole lot. Big Pontiac saying thanks for the topics. Always a pleasure. Always glad to be of service. Uh, just call me Olu saying I made the mistake of only taking footage with the ZVE-10 in Tr Trinidad. I I'll never forget the shakiness. I didn't even know about Catalyst Browse at the time. You'll learn real quick. It's like I had a, a young lady on TikTok ask. She was like, how do you keep your footage from being shaky? I'm like, sister. It is the Pythagorean theorem equation. If you're using a ZVE-10, ZV-1 ZV is better, just the ZV-1. I don't know about the ZV-1 Mark II. I don't recommend the ZV-1F at all because we are not about to figure it out autofocus systems. Forget that. I love Sony, but I don't love that camera. So ZV-1F is a no-go. I'll never, you'll never hear me recommend it. Sorry, I, I, they sent it to me. I tried it at the same time I, I tried the Nikon Z30 and I had the Sony A7S Mark III. You saw none of those cameras come to the channel because it was too many creator-based things that were important, in my opinion, that just isn't right for the majority. And I'm like, the Z30 is lacking in some stuff. Great entry-level point for the Nikon shooters, but I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, also, ZV-1F, no, can't focus. A7S Mark III, I'm like, pause. I'm like, something else got to be around the corner because which was wind up being the FX 30 and then the E1. And now we're seeing all this other stuff, a seven R Mark five, a six, 700. Cause I'm like, no, nah, you don't even got product showcase mode. You don't have, I'm like, you missing stuff and you cost more. No. So yeah, if you still got your footage, sis, you might, you'll be able to put it through catalyst browse. If you have stabilization turned off or you have it in active mode. If you only used, this is for the Sony ZV-E10, if you only used standard while recording, and let's say you had a like a kit lens or the 10 to 18 F4 OSS lens by Sony, and you're using lens stabilization and standard, Catalyst Browse would not work. Uh, the, the Yeah, Catalyst Browse, not Catalyst Repair, Catalyst Browse. So you might be able to save it. You might not. It just, it just depends. Saying thanks for the soup chat. Yeah, thank you, India. Appreciate the mods in the building. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Saying with the data of the A6700, um, I don't know if you're saying, can it handle, is it worth looking at external monitor or recorder and work towards that workflow versus having a whole collection of SD cards? So that's a great, great point that you bring up. Papa Bear, 1958. Y'all be putting them years like 1958 was a good year. That's when I met your mama. Like, that, like that, that's, that's what I think about. When people have like years of like 1973, it's like, hey, somebody granddad met somebody or somebody mom and daddy. Not even granddad. It's somebody mom and daddy. It's like, that's how you hear on the stream right now. 1973. So let's take, <laughs> let's take a look at the bit rate. Uh, real quick. So here's the point I want to point out to you. External modes, not the internal. Internal is going to be fine, but external modes, you, you can do 4 to 2, 10 bit at 4K up to 60, 1080p to 60. So if you hook up an external monitor on the A6700, this is what you're looking at for. So you're not getting like the 4K 120. You're like you need to do a lot of that or whatever. Um, what I would love to see natively come to the Sony cameras. And I talked about this long time ago when the Fuji X-T30, I think came out or something like that, that, um, or even like, what was the X-T30? Yeah, I think it was like the X-T30 or something. 
we need SSD recording from the camera so you can take your SanDisk or Samsung SSDs, plug it into the USB port of the camera and bypass the whole SD card situation. Because if that were the case, podcasters rejoice. <laughs> Long form content creators rejoice. A batch record shoot day recorders <laughs> rejoice because then we could just record via USB C straight from the camera into the thing. So, but we're not there with the cameras yet. I think that I hope that's coming. Maybe that'll be on like an A9, what are we on? A93 or something. So with the data, you know, you, you're going to need cards regardless because the mobility of certain shots, and you only figure this out by getting into videography work. Is some angles, some shots, some environments, um, the way some clients are positioned or um, where you're allowed to stand as a media person. It's all of these little factors that you can't account for, but you need to plan for when you're into videography work or you're recording content or have somebody recording content for you. And it's stuff like that where even an external monitor and that little bit of extra height now makes you have to crunch down even more because you're you're trying to deal with this weirdo angle versus take and unhook everything pop the monitor out and you can be like this because sometimes it gets like that in the midst of the shots that you need um so a monitor might be helpful that's like a five to six hundred dollar investment for a internal recording monitor that can manage all of that but either way, you're looking at storage, whether it's from S SD cards and you're moving that to SSDs, which is I found is the, the best thing. Have a workflow of if you're recording, hell, even if it's a niece or a nephew or a friend, say, hey, when I give you this card, that's why I recommend the specific uh, SSD drivers. Uh, so this is my SanDisk not saying this, the Kingston, I got the Kingston card, a uh, UHS two card, and I got the Kingston card reader. Why? Because when you get into any of these SD cards, UHS one, V30, V60, UHS two cards and stuff, it don't matter. You are only going to get the fastest speeds from the SD card into your computer to offload this stuff with their dedicated thing for your card. So if you use SanDisk, you need a SanDisk SD card reader so you can transfer your speeds quickly without the files breaking up. Because some people use the cheapo random brand somethings or like I got the, um, what is this, CalDigit TS, whatever something. And that has an SD card on there. That has to be like B-roll footage or something that has no audio. I don't, I want to trust that it's going to work fine kind of stuff. But when it comes to like a big file, I don't want to wait all day for it to transfer. You're already using USB 3.0. You're already using USB C. You're maybe doing something with cables or whatever, depending on how your setup is hooked up. Everything needs to be fast. The cables need to be fast. The ports need to be fast. If you're working with a fast SD card to transfer it from the card into your computer to get the fastest speeds that any of the, any card of any brand is advertising, you need their branded card reader. That's why when I, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to UHS two cards and I want to roll with Kingston, then I'm going with the Kingston card reader. So I got to get, get more of these. I got some, a UHS two, um, uh, what is it? Freaking SanDisk. All these guys are names. <laughs> SanDisk SD card, UHS two. I'm like, okay. If I get them at UHS two cards, I need the UHS two SD card reader. I already got it. So if you're going to play in the data game with these better cameras, everything got to up level. So it's not just the camera. It's not just the lens, not just the lights, not just the mics. It's the accessories that you need to account for. That's the card readers. That's the faster cables. That's faster internet. So you can upload speeds because this overnight uploading and hoping that it works. That's not a workflow because it don't work. You're gonna have to upgrade everything else. That's just being honest with you. That's why I said my, my bills with Dropbox, disgusting. My internet bill, it's getting disgusting. <laughs> and it's like, oh, just get a business account. Too slow. 
I just rather pay for a residential fast or whatever. Um, so I hope that answers your question. If you need more details, Papa Bear nineteen fifty eight, just let me know. The AC sound here looks gr looks great still. Copying the ZBE one full frame game. So what you're looking at right now on the trusted Sony thirty five millimeter f one point eight is the bee's knees. I have been hesitant. Uh, I'm just be straight up with y'all. I've been very hesitant about recommending the ZBE one. My friend India's in the chat. So moderator in the chat. She know because she's like, man, the E one is looking great. And I'm like, hey, just wait, <laughs> just hold on. <laughs> And, and she's like, why? And you know, and I got other people's like, man, I'm thinking about the E1. I'm like, hold on. I need to battle test this before I put my name on it. For real, for real. And so the reason why now you see the affiliate links and stuff in the videos, affiliate income ain't that much, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And I'm like, if I'm going to put my name behind it, it needs to be worth it. So like I said, I've been live streaming in 4K using the Sony ZV E10, not E10, but the E1, which is what I'm streaming on right now. It's been going since I had a call uh, this morning. And so had a meeting, it's been going since 10 a.m. It's now 5.44 p.m. It works great. We've been streaming for two hours just on this. I never turned it off. I do have the fan on the ceiling fan, but that's not anything different that I haven't done with any other camera. Cause if I'm live streaming, I refuse to be hot. Because most of the time, my due to my endometriosis, most of the time I have to have a heating pad on and I need the heat high. And I got back fat. I don't want to be hot and sweaty on my live stream. I don't know about y'all, but when you're blessed with abundance, I'm not trying to be hot. And so, but the camera is still recessed into the closet. So it's not even catching what the room is doing for real. And the door is closed to the closet. So, you know, but that's the scenario that it's always been. If I am recording though, the ceiling fan, like regular stuff around the office, the ceiling fan is not on, it's just the air conditioner is on. Cause these people just like, it was 85 degrees and I was doing this overheating test for the Sony ZV-E. What hell are you recording in? Do your wife love you to let you have the air conditioner on to record some videos, sir? Because I don't know what some of these people are doing on YouTube. I, I really don't. I, so I now can say, uh, I do recommend the Sony ZV-E1. However, with the other cameras that are out there, it may not be the best camera. And I wish it wasn't because I feel like some of that could have been adopted with a $3 fan or something internally or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, what we care if is that much more of a smidgen for depth if it was a fan put in there to deal with it. I'd rather pay the extra and have the fan or the better heat dissipation. So we're not even having to have this conversation about overheating, but I know as I'm showing y'all now, I've done another stream where I wanted to see, could the ZVE one survive the five hour energy live streams? If you've been around for the channel, you know, when we do a five hour energy live stream. We stream for five hours nonstop. So if the ZVE 10, the a 6,400, the a 6,100 of all those cameras that are cheaper, can survive the five hour energy live stream, which is part of my creator gauntlet test. If it can survive that, then what? The ZVE one survives the, the five hour energy live stream test. So it's like, if you do need that uh, recording long-term and whatever, I get, and this, and me and Doc, we butt heads about this a little bit. He likes to do the USB internal thing. I disagree. I like to use the AC power uh, option because it just, the battery consistently drains over time. I just don't want to even think about it. Like, I don't even want to think about the battery life. If I'm doing like today, it's I'm all online all day long. Call, the, call here, meeting there. I'm not finna keep bouncing up and swapping batteries and all, I ain't doing all that. I'm just not. AC power adapter, regular live stream setup. So uh, I now feel more comfortable with it passing that recommending the E1, but it's not going to be for everybody in every environment. You're doing podcasting, AC power adapter. Asterisk. I will, if you, if you need to DM me on Instagram, on, on, at me on threads somewhere, email me. <laughs> if you want to know the one that I use, it's the same one. If you go to diana.link forward slash gear, that link will send you to my Amazon page. 
the same one for the FX30, the A6, uh, the same one I use, Ricep, that, that brand, I've been using it for years, used it for the A6600, it works now for this camera. That is what you need to use. I don't know nothing about these other ones. Everybody recommends Go9 on uh, Amazon. I don't know nothing about them. I know Ricep. <laughs> I know Ricep. I don't know Go9 like that. My friends have used them and they recommend them. You have to take their word for it. Um, but Ricep, I know about Ricep. That's what I use. That's what a $2,200 investment. Sheesh. Be careful with these cheap AC power adapters is all I'm saying. Um, all right, Sam, wanted to mention, great stream, Diana. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Really do. It's been a minute since we've done a Friday live stream or anything like that, so it's good to be back in the, the swing of things. Uh, India America, speak of Spanish in America, said A72 can't wait for that announcement, especially if it has dynamic. That is going to be, I think it might. Because let us look upon the forest of BNH photo video and see. So this is the FX30. I want to keep that open. This is the, uh, who do we have up here? So this is the ZVE1 and you are just the lenses. Okay, let's search here. Um, let's do the Sony because those were discounted recently for the Prime Day sale. Sony ZV, no, A7C. Gosh, these names, man. Goodness mercy. <laughs> $15.98 right now without the lens. $14.05 for a Sony A7C Mark I. I think that's still mighty high. I think those should have dropped as well, but that would be giving and telling. So $13.98 versus $15.98. And you're looking spec wise, uh, 4K30, you do have rolling shutter. 24 megapixel sensor. All sensors are not created equal. <laughs> uh, 6.3 million dot whatever or point autofocus with 2.36. Uh, let's see. If I just, cause, uh, I think it's here. Yeah. So 26 megapixels are uh, X more are. I'm just comparing the features now. So a different processor, obviously, because the AI one. So 759 point phase detection, 93% coverage. Um, so this is a little bit slower for shooting photos. Uh, you do get a, it, correct me if I'm wrong. This is about the same EVF that's on this one as it is over here. Let me see what, uh, if I just search Sony ZV, um, gosh, turn these names. What is this camera called? A6700. Good Lord. All right. We're getting it together. Okay. All right. So yeah, 11 frames per shooting, I believe is, so they didn't do what the uh, eye cup piece is or whatever for the thing on this one, but I'm pretty certain that's the same one that 2.36 million dot viewfinder. I'm pretty sure it's the same. Stabilization is going to be worse on this one. It is cheaper. Some people are getting them used for insane prices. You probably get one used if you buy from somebody for like a thousand bucks. Because if we go over yonder to Sony A7C, if you're going to sell your gear to B&H, which they do not give you the best value most of the time, they're, they're great, they're a great company, but 720 bucks. So that's why I say you, they well placed at a thousand dollars. If somebody personally sells this, because this is what, you, what you're looking at a quote wise from b &H photo video, $720. I think it's not, <laughs> uh, and these are still running for as much as they're running for. I think it's not. <laughs> so yeah, you could probably find one used for a thousand bucks from somebody. If you go to gear focus or something like that, like I said, MPP is good with their stuff and they have like a, I think it's like six month warranty or something on the stuff that you buy, which MPB only sells used stuff. Let me, let's, let's, let's go over to the, uh, MPB real quick. See how much a Sony a7C costs over here. A7C. 
if you're enjoying the stream or getting value out of it, make sure you hit the like button. So yeah, much cheaper over here. So 1200 versus the 1400 used. And they actually show you the picture of what the actual camera looks like. Um, I have found their ratings to be fair for like, if they say something is wrong with it or whatever, uh, kind of a deal. Uh, somebody missed focus on that one. Just saying. So this one is, is definitely worn and you can kind of see that around the edges here. Uh, that's one thing I, I will say, uh, since we mentioned the, a, not the, a good Lord, the Z V E one. So like stuff like this on the bottom of your camera. So this is why the bottom plates that you see by small rig or, um, Ulanzi, if you get, I'm throwing pro tip, I'm throwing juice all day long today. All right. If you use a bottom plate, like the ZV-1, A6600, something just to cover, even if it stays on a tripod, I'm, gosh, I wish I knew this before. Just the, you don't have to add all the extra weight of a full cage. Just add the bottom base plate thing. I don't, even if it's a third party, something, just something. Because what that does is protects the port on here so that it doesn't rub that gets you extra value this is the value of like a different of a hundred bucks or something of it having this like from just the quick release plate being on there and the normal wear and tear of the camera because this is going to be the most used part of the even if you don't ever take it off my ac6 a6600 got docked when i traded it into keh for that very reason i'm like i wish i had known i would have left the daggone uh plate on there so you can see the difference in price for what you would purchase it for. So this one's $12.79, whereas a pristine one with less wear is $15.49. So the value in the trade-in that you would get is way better when your gear doesn't have those signs of use. So if I was to sell my ZVE-1 after the way I've been using it right now, I'm already seeing uh, little chips of me using it from, I don't have a bottom base plate, I don't have a cage for it yet, I don't have anything. To protect it and i'm seeing wear and tear i'm like i'm keeping this at this point because <laughs> i'm like there's no point in selling it not that it looks bad or whatever but i understand how the value exchange works so if you want the best bang for your buck throw a base plate at least on there just to protect it from when you set it down put it on a tripod that little that, that wear and tear over time that little bit of friction it does eat into it uh quite a bit saying dynamics does dynamic stay work better with the higher shutter speeds um it's not that it works better what happens is, um, it's just a motion blur. So that's why you want the higher, um, shutter speed when you're doing dynamic stave It's just to account for the motion blur and it needing to crop in whatever other scientific stuff that it does. So that's the only thing. San has the point of the a 6700 been made of more photocentric hybrid been lost. Um, I don't think so, but at the same time, I don't cover, you know, I'm brown. I don't cover photo stuff like that on the channel. We don't even talk about a whole half of the camera because <laughs> it's everything is for video, video simplified for busy entrepreneurs, past thumbnails, headshot photos, whatever. If you're a true hybrid creator, our brother, Jason Vong over in Japan can help you out. However, or even like Terry Warfield, shout out to Terry and Terry been doing the, the daggone thing. Um, if you're a hybrid shooter, yeah, it's great for that. But if the primary focus, if it's like an 80, 20 split of 80% video, 20%, um, photos eh, 11 frames per second or whatever, are you going to hit it? Are you ever going to really rely on that? Are you going to need it? Probably not. Are you ever going to be, you know, you're not really hitting any of the they all the same photos wise for the most part that's the that's the only thing with the photos it don't change much yeah okay you got eye you got bird you got <laughs> insect you got trains you got planes automobiles <laughs> like you <laughs> faster like oh less shutter speed warp or whatever between shutter and mechanical or whatever it's very little fine detail differences but if you are a hybrid shooter it is a big deal it is a big deal but on this channel brother i'm the brown it won't make a hill of beans for most of the creators that are mostly doing video specific stuff with the cameras. It is a small subsect of the community that is a hot, true hybrid shooter, but not, not that many. 
What is going on, Sammy Superstar in the building? Good to see you, brother. Glad that you are here. Sandy A6700 looks like a good camera, but it's not for me. I upgraded to full frame and I really liked it. That's what I'm talking about. Good for you, Sammy. What did you, I'm curious, what did you pick up? I, I want to guess A74 or even could be A7S Mark III, uh, knowing you, but let me know. Uh, what is going on, Kevin Cox? Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Um, Sam, do you think the tracking feature is coming to the FX30? Do you mean the whatever where it follows you around thing? Don't know. Do you mean the, I don't know if it, if the FX30 even does the manual focus and autofocus thing that I was talking about early. I don't know. Um, the fact that Sony did do a recent update to the FX30, there is a small amount of hope that allegedly it might come at some point, but if Sony didn't promise it, don't expect it. It's got to be some hell and high water. And I mean, as for as much as uh, a A7S Mark III and FX3 users are at this point begging and completely furious about not getting updates that cheaper cameras are having that could be a firmware update to those top tier um, would be considered flagship cameras i don't think so i don't think it's a good chance of seeing that so i wouldn't i wouldn't bank on it they don't even point complain about complaining about it to a point it's kind of like yeah so i don't think the tracking will come said hmm gonna try airplane mode yeah i just i keep my camera in airplane mode is in airplane mode uh right now unless i'm transferring footage or whatever that the extra stuff being turned on just or available it's irrelevant to me um all right, let's see here. Cello David Hunt, good to see you, brother. Glad that you are here. Just saw someone flying a drone through the fireworks show. There's a clip, uh, Kevin, if you think that's cool, of it was like a dragon, like a Japanese style dragon or something, but it was all drones. They were all colored, it, and they were in perfect synchronization. So they had a bunch of drone opera, just like control. It was fantastic. It was amazing. I was saying those people are gonna get hit by the karma truck. The people that stole, yes, they will. Uh, Deontay Cameron, good to see you, glad that you're here. Saying, can you get insurance if you buy a uh, used camera gear? Yes, because all of your stuff has value, um, even though it's used. What is the difference that might be the thing that you're thinking of is that when you buy something new, you have that relationship between the manufacturer's warranty of a new product that even if the person that bought it didn't use it yet or whatever, it's between that new product and the manufacturer's warranty at that point. When you buy a used product, if you go to MPB, I think it's something like a six month warranty that they give you on their stuff. And my first Tamron lens, I wasn't sure what was wrong with it, but it wind up being the same thing what was wrong with the second one. The firmware wasn't updated. It was still on 1.0. So it wasn't holding up. It was doing all kind of crazy stuff. Then I'm like, oh, it needs to be updated. But I traded, I sent it right back. And they was like, no problem. They paid for shipping sent me the stuff back out in like a couple days. So it's dope. So let me see what it, what it is, but B and H will allow you to get, um, extra, I won't say insurance, but like coverage, if you will, um, when it comes to stuff like that. So look into who you're buying from. And if you are buying used from a company like K E H like B and H photo, like MPB, it, it is important to get and tack on whatever you can. Because should you need to send your camera in for repairs, you probably won't have access to the manufacturer's warranty. Because again, that's usually for the original purchaser, which you won't have the receipt for it being brand new from the Best Buy or b &H or Amazon. You have a used receipt and that those numbers tell the story of it being used when they go to verify that. So, um, just FYI. All right. Wait, saying some people flying drones are dumb. <laughs> said I'm studying to get my license to become a commercial drone pilot. And I can add that to my list of services. Kudos to you, India. Saying let's hit that like button, show Diana all the love and support. That's what I'm talking about. And there's real in digital streets. All right, we're not doing a, a five hour energy live stream. I'm letting y'all know this right now. When I get to the bottom of the comments, speed running right now uh, we're we're closing it 
Good to see you exploring Canada. We're glad that you are here saying, hey, wait, it's not Friday. And yet, Miss Gladney is live. Today is a bonus kind of day. Indeed it is. Good to see you. Glad that you are here. Saying this wrong. I know what you're talking about. Can't be held responsible. <laughs> saying very usable for most cases. It might not work on a billboard, but for most internet use cases, it would be amazing. Yeah, for like photos and stuff. Uh, saying just reread that comment. <laughs> saying I'm thinking about going to the ZVE-1 but I've invested so much in my APS-C lenses. Is there compromises with quality when using APS-C lenses on the ZV-E1? Yes and no, because, so let's let's unpack very quickly, uh, yes and no. No, because to the untrained eye, they won't be able to tell um, what the difference is. It won't, it won't matter to them because they won't care. They care about the quality of what they imagine it should look like in professional photos or videos or whatever. And is it matching to that quality of their imagination? It's usually what most cost customers and clients think, um, unless they are in the space and, and keep up with all that stuff. Yes, in the sense of you're already working with a 12 megapixel sensor on the ZV-E1. So all the same things that are true of the FX3 as well as the A7S3 are still true of the ZBE-1 as far as the sensor and stuff like that. So you're only gonna be able to crop up to 1.5 times in 4K because you don't have that much to work with. I had somebody ask and leave the comment about what about the digital zoom that you can add in to go in and even further. It's not worth it. Because at what point is it worth to get that extra crop in that is better to do in post so you at least see what you're doing and you have the choice versus cropping in and then you just stuck and you don't have any of that extra bandwidth to work with. Um, so it is a difference with the 35 millimeter F 1.8. This is the caveat. The longer the focal length, the less that you have to crop in using clear image zoom to remove the vignetting. So as I said before, I'm using the Sony 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens. This is an APS-C lens. I'm not in active mode or dynamic active or nothing like that to use the crop. It's only like a 1.2 ish times crop on this. Whereas if I'm on the Tamron 20 millimeter F 2.8, because it's a wider focal length, I now need to go in closer to a 1.3 plus before I get to the very, very edge of the vignetting of the frame on the back of the APS-C lens. So you're not at letting as much light into the, the camera. You're not getting as much quality as the sensor could kick out, but what you are seeing is still going to be great. So I don't think it's enough to get into the weeds and these people on the internet, God bless them. Ain't nobody zooming into 480,000% and be like, look, that leaf is blurry. That's weird. Like, like we got to draw, draw the line of weird stuff. Yeah. If you getting paid for billboard work or something, it's probably a, a standard that you need to uphold to. But if it's your content and you di di dictate with these people that zoom in, it's like, well, when you zoom in 287%, you can see that the leaf is slight. It's just weird. Ain't nobody doing that. Like some people walk around with cracked phone screens. Do you really think they finna zoom in? <laughs> this is not happening. It's not normal. It's not, it's not regular. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I'm saying. So I don't think like you'll have some space because you're invested. My thing was I wanted to make a clean break from APS-C, honestly, because I don't, I didn't want to fall back into APS-C because I love APS-C personally. I had no intentions or interest in going to full frame, but I just know from brand behavior and future of what companies are going to do and the stuff that I want and the goals that's more than likely going to be on a full frame camera a whole hell of a lot sooner than on APS-C. For example, the A6700 A6, is a dope camera still don't have everything that the e1 in it i'm already aware of how stuff was going to work so i'm like it's fx30 don't have what this camera have and this camera don't have what the fx30 have and blah 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 and i'm like I'm probably gonna not not stick with it for that reason so it don't make sense in my opinion to pay as much money as you would for a full frame camera regardless of what it is and only stay on APS-C lenses. So longer focal length, like I said, a 35 millimeter, maybe on forward, you're doing 50s, 85 millimeters. You're not gonna have to crop in as much because that is already pretty, pretty deep. 
but if you have a bunch of wide lenses sigma 16 sony 11 f 1.8 samyang 12 millimeter f2 samyang or roca 9 18 millimeter f2 point like if you're doing stuff like that you're going to be cropping in a lot you're not getting all of what the camera can do because you have to crop in and you minimize what you could do having to you know it's just it's not worth it long term know what lenses it makes sense to to use APS-C but also be looking to get at least a couple lenses that are full frame that's why I said earlier in the stream how to get the most bang for your buck and the most money possible when you're trading in so you don't get caught you know with less money in your pocket when you could get more uh that's my my opinion saying number uh not q <laughs> yeah i'm getting a little tired we're gonna have to wrap this up say q are you liking the axon simo i've been looking uh at that for a similar use case i have no complaints about it because um the whatever that ba big battery is i can't recall what is what it is but whatever those big sony batteries are that usually are for lights and stuff like that um, you are using that for it to work. I don't have to take my phone out of the case in order for it to fit into the thing. And the extra weight gives you whatever, a little bit of stabilization if you're doing any kind of handheld stuff. Um, and sometimes I don't even attach it to the, the hot shoe on the camera or anything like that. Most of the time I'm just like holding my phone and I have it just so I can see it real quick and it's connected. And then I'd get those few shots that I need and then it's back in the bag. So it's not big. Um, it's not cumbersome. It don't take up any space and it lasts. Like I was out of town for two weeks. The battery never died. <laughs> I don't even think I got down to two of those bars. So maybe less than 40% of the battery. I never got even close to that and I was using it quite a bit. So it works great. Uh, I, I like it. I think it, it depends on you. If you need the quality of a, of a screen and like external recording, not on your phone or whatever. So says so just bought the uh, act soon and still haven't you see that that gas gets you the gear acquisition syndrome <laughs> saying great point think about where people um people are looking at your videos and what devices they're using 100 percent. oh we got another super chat i'm sorry i have not paid attention to that thanks diana for all that you do have some white chocolate for the cause for the will you know what we're gonna pause the stream mix we're gonna crank it up because brother david has entered the chat with a super chat. And if you haven't been around the stream for a while, you're not gonna know this music, but when we next do the Wheel of Wonder game, which I've been promising it for a while, this is the Wheel of Wonder music. <laughs> this is the Wheel of Wonder music. <laughs> and we usually do a giveaway when you hear this music. So just for you, Dave, because you, <laughs> Gave the super chat. We'll play a little bit of the wheel of one. It's the corniest music, but the best game you ever played. K Walk Comedy is mad, thinks the wheel of wonder don't love her, but the wheel of wonder is not biased. Okay? But this is, if you hear this music, we're getting ready to have a big giveaway. Uh, and it's a game that we created called the wheel of wonder. And it's amazing. However, allegedly, there are some people in the community that when they lose, this is what you hear instead because it's so sad and we just wave our hands and stream. <laughs> if you lose and the wheel didn't let you win nothing, you didn't get the microphone, you didn't get the new camera giveaway, you didn't get no book, you didn't get no merch, you didn't get no discount. We just praying for you. So <laughs> we got the wheel of wonder coming up. I just have to plan for when I'm gonna do it. The book is out now. We hit the bestseller list within like minutes of the book going live. Uh, so I, you know, David, I appreciate the super chat. Uh, I was planning in advance so y'all can see it when we're going to do the wheel of wonder giveaway. Cause y'all sure has heck have been asking about it. Uh, Tamaria saying, yes, that's right. Okay, cool. Pronounce your name. Awesome. Saying, yes, I want SSD recording with my Sony camera. I would love to see it. I think that needs to be the next big feature that comes to the Sony cameras. Honestly, um, I think it's dope. USB-C recording SSD would be fire. So Sony, the people are asking and demanding. I am yet a humble servant of the people. No, SSD, like SSDs already cost. Maybe Sony makes uh, an SSD. Maybe we get faster than what the SD cards could do. 
So you recoup the money or whatever. Sony's a reliable brand for the camera as well as data management. So you have trust. I see this being a win-win. Uh, work with small rig, get a cage adapter thing made for it or something. And like, I, I see this being a win-win. Uh, saying external, uh, as an OMG external recording on a Sony would be so sweet. Indeed. Indeed. Ani1968, uh, thanks for the question for help produce the last video. Just appreciate that. Saying I am in the market for the ZVE1. I mean, like I said, it's not for everybody, but for those that it's for, it's a dope camera. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Saying is it self-promotion to say for sale, practically brand new, the Sony a6600 body only call for details. Well, Tommy Ellison, <laughs> I, because I know you're a, tr a trustworthy person, hit brother Tommy up. If you need to, to pick up an a6600, just throwing it out there. I, I get no, no discounts, but if, I mean, a super chat is available unto you. Hey, Lord bless you and keep you always and just got an email for my GH5 from Best Buy and it was 70 it was like $75 I was like what rock do you live under yeah the GH5 is still an awesome camera I'm not gonna hold you is is it uh, I mean you know what honestly if you can work with without autofocus like it, it's been doing 422 10-bit 4k 60 internal recording great battery life, incredible stabilization. If you can deal with the light lighting thing or whatever, I said, I used to rock with Panasonic. I think they're dope. Everybody's like, I'm going to, to Lumix for the S5 Mark II. May the Lord bless you and keep you always. I ain't putting my footage to practice for new autofocus to figure it out. I'm just not. Yeah, the stuff on YouTube may look great, but I'll put it to you this way. that That's the footage that made it to, like if I wanted to sell the E1 and say that everybody was lying about overheating, there's no such thing wrong with the overheating. But I don't show you any of the clips of it actually overheating. I don't show you what the environments are like. I don't show you what scenarios were or how long the camera was on and I was recording and blah, blah, blah. I only show you the footage that matters. You're none the wiser because you only see what I upload. You're trusting that who you're watching, which is this for all of us. We all do this. You're trusting that who you're watching is showing you the exact details. And for the most part, fellow creators, you people, you hear me mention their name or I watch or I share their stuff or whatever are people I consider trustworthy, but everybody that like, you see this overheating test, I returned it because of whatever searching for views, hunting for views, hoping to have a viral video that does something for them. And you can, it's like, it's one of those things like, you know how you walk in a room and you can read somebody like a book and you know, they ain't about nothing. Like, you know, they are trash in a bag and you just met them. It's like vibes like that. You still get those vibes off people when you watch their stuff. Unfortunately, when you're in a buying mindset on YouTube and stuff, those things you're overlooking because you want what that person is saying to be true. And it's, it's stuff like that. You just learn in the process. I'm like, don't buy based on your emotions, buy based on your list of non-negotiables. What are the things that your camera must have and must do in order for it to serve you? And then let's add on the efficiency stuff or whatever. Cause everybody footage can look great. Everybody footage can look in focus until they turn their head to the side and the camera start looking at John Coltrane. Like he got a sponsored ad in the video or something. So I'm just saying, <laughs> I said, I got my A7C from Best Buy open box for 1330. Definitely got a decent deal uh, and got the Best Buy warranty. India works with Heisenberg. And I don't know what kind of deals they be making on camera. India's deals are not legit. Neil, good to see you. Glad that you're here. Sam, probably the best Sony hybrid right now for me is the A7 IV. For a lot of people, it is. I know Doc really liked that camera. I couldn't rock with it like that. Um, I really care about the weight of my gear. I'm, I'm becoming like an ultra light creator with the stuff. Like I need to do these many features, have these many specs, this battery life, whatever kind of stuff in order for it to serve me well in the way that I work and move. And the a7 IV was just a little too heavy. And when I sprang my wrist, I'm like, number one, I should lift the weight or two. <laughs> and number two, <laughs> I'm like, it just is as heavy as the a6600 was, which this is something for the a6700 that it depends per person. 
I know I got tired of carrying my A6600 around. So when the ZVE10 and stuff came out, I'm like, oh gosh, yes. It's so, so much lighter. Please, please. Because when I fell asleep on the plane, and when I tell you, I get ugly sleep on the plane, put the mask on so I can sleep as ugly as I want <laughs> and nobody's none the wiser. Okay. I was holding the camera. I just naturally was holding it. I was getting the shot where you, you know, take off or whatever. And I just fell asleep. Uh, and then I woke up when we were landing and the camera was still in my hands and it wasn't like, it didn't feel like a weight and a burden. And I just noticed that whole day I was just carrying it around in my hand. Didn't have the little clip for the book bag thing or nothing like that yet. So I was just carrying it around and it wasn't a burden. Whereas with the A6600 where I have my sling bag or something, you feel that weight. With the sick bat and the Sigma 16, lift a weight or two if you want to carry that around with you. <laughs> a, uh, the A6700 is a little bit lighter. Let me pull that, that spec up real quick because I do want to know the exact weight. It was in the 500-ish range. Let's see here. Uh, and this is the first thing I go to when I'm checking for it. Look at this, 1.1 pound. 493 with the battery. It's not bad, but that I, I don't want to see one. Nothing. What did, what are you for a seven C? Cause that was another one. I vlogged with that one in San Diego and I got a chance to use it. Uh, photos wise, that new 70 to 200 F four lens probably will be dope with this, but the F two point, look at 1.1 beefers, beefers FX 30, which is not bad. And again, grand scheme of things. Good Lord. But I'm not, I, I don't want to feel like I'm lifting a weight all day. 1.2 beefer at uh, listen, ZVE one, come on down to funky town. Let me, <laughs> where are we at? Praise be to the newborn King still at a 1.1, but 483 grams, 399. If it don't have nothing in it, when I see ounces still, I'm like, okay. So 1.1 with the battery and it's not too bad, but I'm telling you, it definitely, it don't seem like that much. And it's so silly, but I'm like, how many ounces is that? How many grams is that? Okay. Five, six, two, four ninety. So this one's way lighter. Let's not get it twisted. Way lighter. So 493, 483, they're in the same ballpark. I wouldn't mind carrying this one around. So it's in that ZVE one territory. I don't know what the, uh, let's go to the ZVE, uh, E10. Just so I can get that. Cause I know that's in the such and such weight range. It's just a real deal. Holy feel when you, when you got 50 pounds of gear on your back and I've done that 30 pounds of gear on your back, I'm counting every ounce. Like who, who needs to lose weight and we need to switch cameras. Uh, where are we at? No package for info. Come on. Nope. That's the box. Yep. Uh, nope. That's the AC adapter. Did I pass it up? Here we go. Look, look at this. Listen. Oh, the battery. I'm like, no, cause I'm like, that's way too light. Is this it? Yep. Okay. No, it can't be. Are they playing with me? Cause I'm like, hold on. Black base, no camera. They are playing games with my emotions, Smokey. If you catch that reference, you might be a little hood, allegedly. All right, here we go. 343. Boom. Bangarang Peter. 12.1 ounces on uh, that. Yes, please. And thank you. I'll take that all day long. And that's the ZBE 10. Yeah. Because. Yeah. So the A6700, 493 grams. That's, that's my kind of. Yeah, that's my kind of zone. A7C, get out of here overweight zve 10 home 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 run 493 483 excuse me on the zve1 399 with the body only it don't feel much different with the battery either so it's a winner it's a winner in my book all right so still streaming marathon i went to dinner and came back we're closing in on three hours i said at two hours we were going to be done Hey, walk comedy. Ain't nobody asked you to bring up how long we've been streaming for. <laughs> oh, okay. Look, I said, it's got to survive the five hour energy live stream. Are we doing that today? No, no, we're not doing that. 
However, the camera's been on since 10 a.m. It is now 6.23 p.m. <laughs> Do you know where your children are? Okay. I'm just saying. So <sighs> people that are saying they, they E1 can't stream. Ridiculous. Best Buy open, uh, uh, open Box gets you a bit of extra warranty. Ask India. Christopher Sanders, good to see you. Glad that you are here. Sam, can you update firmware uh, like the E10 to get the new new? You must have one of the newer cameras. It could be. Let's not get it twisted. It could be, but it's not going to be. So if you want the new menus like the E1, you need to get a camera like the A6700. You need to get a camera like the Sony ZV-E1. Uh, a7 IV, any of the recent cameras, ZV, uh, ZV-1 Mark II even has it. Though it has to be a newer camera that they're putting the new menu systems in. The A6700 has the new menus, but the ZV-E10 still has the old old menu. I got the E10 right here. There's no updates coming for it. It's not having any mechanical issues or something. That's the only time you're gonna see firmware updates on a camera that's older. Not that it's so old, but just older. No, it's not gonna happen, Chris. Tommy saying, got to run uh, to get a magic gig. Y'all have fun. Good to see you saying five hour. We're not doing the five hour energy. As soon as I get to the bottom of these comments, send the wheel of wonder. It's been so long. I know it has. You know, to be honest with you, we probably should have did it uh, just to celebrate 20,000 subscri subscribers because that's a huge monument. Uh, it is a big deal. Um, but the book coming out, the book, my book, the one right video coming out, that was a that was a big deal, and hitting bestsellers that was a bit that was a big deal, a very big deal. First one in my family to write a book, write and publish a book, and and bestseller. Take that nieces and nephews that are probably like Auntie Diana, I sold three million copies of my book. <laughs> and of course you hit the bestsellers list within moments of going live. Praise the Lord. I, I have been I'm telling you I have been speaking that since the day I committed to beginning writing the book those of you in the let's get live Facebook group community uh, that we had going on for a long time those of you that know I started sharing the stream I was like I'm writing this I'm like and I would put for the stream title writing my best-selling book so we're speaking that believing it putting it in the work from day one and I still have my GH5 and will not sell it even though I'm all in now with Sony full frame. The GH5 is still a workhorse. 100% agreeing with that. India, America, Legils, they be questionable. Be quite the Heisenberg questionable deals you be doing, right? I'm riding a bike to a new neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> still got my GH5 and G85 really thinking about. Um, and I'm just close to selling both and going to full frame. Can't input on that. I had the G85 for a long time. It's a dope camera. And I bought it because it was unlimited recording. Nobody else was doing it but Panasonic at the time. So, I don't know. Saying a little hood. Doesn't everyone have a little hood in them? Allegedly. We can neither confirm nor deny if one person or, or others may or may not, okay, have a hood background of some sort or what have you. But I can tell you what we do have. The end of the live stream... We, get, we, we got all the way to the bottom of the comments section after probably 45 minutes of being behind, but <laughs> we did it nonetheless. We live streaming for two hours and 51 minutes, 37 seconds on the Sony ZV-E1 of this stream. Been running this camera since 10 a.m. this morning, nonstop, I haven't turned it off, still going. So if you're wondering if the ZV-E1 can stream or what have you, it can. So if this was a podcast, same rules apply. Use an AC power adapter, regular live streaming setup. You're good to go. That's why I got in on Panasonic. There's no reason to stay uh, at this point. I mean, may the Lord bless you and keep you all your ways because I don't know what to tell you on that one, brother. It, if like switching brands is not easy and it's frustrating to like, especially once you know it, you know it like the back of your hand. So that's why I'm like, the switching brands thing, I don't, I don't really vibe with that for real. Like, you got to for real want to, like, you got to know that this is for you. Like, when I switched to Sony, I tried the Ace, I didn't try it, I had the A6400. I'm like, this is it. I'm like, I'm home. Like, I'm home. I'm good. 
like i'm like this is it so <laughs> so that's where i'm gonna leave it for this stream uh let me know if you have questions while you watch the, whether you're watching this live or on the replay thanks for being here covered a lot today in today's stream and if you got all the way to the end if you send the letter c p s i will give you a free signed copy only the live folks gonna be able to take advantage of this shit. should have should have been here should have been here cps not for child protective services but for chapstick which is today's sponsor of the stream i'm just kidding it's not but cps send that to the support email support at dianagladia.com i'll send you a free sign author copy uh we have all the people picked already so if you still hold on you haven't sent in yet or you sent in one you can send in again so if you got all the way through the end of the stream you are a trooper because man did we go long so let me reward you with giving this uh book away also my book is on sale uh i'm gonna pull this up real 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 quick it's i i was like I wanted to put this on sale because I'm like, I, I had a lot of people want to message, message me about wanting the book. I'm like, it's Prime Day. People are going to be on there buying anyway. Let's give the people what they want. So if you go on to Amazon, you will see I have deeply, deeply discounted my book. Something crazy. $1.99 for the ebook and $7.11 because whatever reason those numbers spoke to me and I liked them if you want to get the paperback. And if you got prime shipping, free prime shipping on that. So this is not going to be the regular price moving forward. It'll go back up to the regular price, but for right now, limited time only, you want to grab one, it don't have to be a signed copy or whatever. You want to get the ebook, it's 199. You want to get the print book, it's 711. You send the, the code CPS, not for Child Protective Services, but for Chapstick <laughs> to support at dianagladney.com. I will give you a free sign out the copy, but it's got to be the first one, first person. We already had somebody win on all the other videos. So let's see. I don't see anybody. I don't see, uh, nobody has sent it yet. So you got one hour to send that code CPS. Nope, it can't be in the chat, don't count. It's gotta be in the email. So first person that sends that to support at dianagladia.com, I will send you a signed author copy send. If you don't have Prime, sign up with Diane's link and get the free shipping, 100%. Go to diana.link forward slash Prime if you wanna get a, a free Amazon Prime account. Um, FYI, this is personal, but I, I've seen this in our affiliate stuff, uh, our affiliate income report but you can get a discounted prime account if you are on like food stamps and you have an EBT card and stuff like that. Um, I noticed that they give you like an insane discount for prime. So if that is your personal situation, you need not comment in the chat or whatever, safe space, but just letting you know, I've seen that and I researched it. You can get, if you are like on EBT food stamps or whatever, they give you prime at an absurd discount, like absurd discount for the year and if you're a student as well so fyi uh so you got to send the codes and what i miss judd everybody give it up for judd wait where's the applause <laughs> judd is my editor so if you've been loving the videos it's because of judd judd been putting his foot in the video edit so judd you missed everything i've been streaming for almost three hours brother <laughs> And I'm just about to, David, you sent the email. Let's see who won. David. I see the email. It said, mama, I finally made it. <laughs> David, you win a new signed author copy from me. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure something out for our overseas brothers and sisters. Cause I don't understand what it is for us to send stuff from Amazon. I don't get why we can't uh, at least or whatever without it being crazy so maybe i'll do like amazon gift cards or something if you want to get the book and like cover it that way or something um but you got to watch the next video because david already took care of it for for this one but guys remember to create post and repeat and one way or another you're either going to create content or you're going to create excuses i would encourage you to create content with that, guys, with passion, I'll see you on the next video or live stream somewhere here on the interwebs. Peace.
Are you an entrepreneur struggling to get your brand noticed through video content? Look no further. The One Right Video is the ultimate guide to creating videos that will amplify your brand and grow your business. It's jam packed with practical tips and strategies to help entrepreneurs just like you succeed in video content creation and be among the first to get your hands on a copy of the One Right Video. Go to onerightvideo.com.